Because I'm gonna get him! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Hagman and Hagman Report for today, this Friday, October 5th, 2012. My name is Joe Hagman, the co-host with my father, Doug Hagman. Uh, you were about to hear two hours of, I'm sorry, three hours of unbiased and uncensored news and analysis, information you need to know in these perilous times. We broadcast each and every weeknight from 8 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can find us on the Internet at homelandsecurityus.com. You can also watch us uh, live as we simulcast in high-def video on the Christians United Broadcasting Network, and that video will be up in just a minute. We want to thank each and every one of you for joining us tonight, um, as, we, as uh, we're happy that you have faith enough in us to bring you the news uh, and analysis of the current events in an unbiased and truthful manner. And if I sound like I'm jumping around i am my father is late to the broadcast table and he is just sitting down now and uh tonight's a very uh gonna be a very busy night we got a lot of information to get into uh dhs insider information um we have an update for you there uh this is uh, an important update but also one that still needs to be uh vetted and uh, with that, we have uh, news on the jobless rate, and this is a, a dandy of a story. If you've been following uh, the news of the day, I'm sure this has come across your your screen. Um, U.S. jobless rate falls to 7.8%, the lowest since 2009 from January, and the biggest drop, one month drop, in the last 29 years. I think it's 29 years? Yep, 29 years. Interesting. Welcome, folks. Uh, thanks for coming for me, Joe. I know that it was glad you could join us tonight. Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I, I apologize. I had. Uh, I was just finishing up a couple of uh, things that I wanted to bring to the table, uh, literally to the table today. Um, in fact, this is going to be kind of a an interesting show. I, I hope all folks. I hope all of our shows are interesting. I, I really do. I, I hope that you receive information from our shows that you can use practical information, helpful information. Um, I, I, I do want to say this on the open. Um, as Joe alluded to, uh, we, I'm going to provide some additional information from uh, from the DHS insider that, that I've been cultivating here. I, I would ask that... Uh, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to say I was kind of taken back a little bit as I came into the studio uh, today earlier and, uh, almost my father was at a loss for words. Didn't know how to, how yeah. to put this together. And, uh, it was well, un uncharacteristic of him. <laughs> <laughs> uncharacteristic. I always, I always, uh, I, I never met a loss for words. I, I would ask this from everybody. Please pray for, uh, please pray for this gentleman. Um, I can't even give you his first name, but just uh, just in your hearts and in your minds, please pray for this gentleman. He's going through a pretty rough patch here as the Department of Homeland Security brass, the the upper echelon, are putting out. Uh, and I'm being very serious about this. I'm not. Uh, I'm not even trying to trivialize this. Uh, the my source looked terrible. Looked worse than Obama at the debate. Uh, looked haggard, looked tired, and was definitely under stress. And I had asked if he was, uh, you know, under, under surveillance or being harassed or being threatened, and uh, there was really no answer. And that's not characteristic of my source. Uh, I do believe that they're, they, they, meaning the people at within the government, are, are giving this gentleman a very hard time. And the reason I'm having a difficult time putting this into uh, in, into a written format is because of the amount and type of information that I did receive. Okay, um, this meeting took place in the in the middle of the night. 
Uh, dark alley or no, parking garage? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, and sometimes um, things happen. Things are scheduled for that time of day or that time of night because of uh, of schedules. Other times because of, uh, hey, look, this is the only time that we could really meet. And I don't want to put a lot of mystery around it. it it's actually um, just how it played out. But I did talk with, with this individual, and, and uh, he said, frankly, that he was uncertain whether he could continue these meetings. And I take that to mean that, that at this point, uh, any for any additional meetings would be... Um, well, you know, you know, um, I, I, you I understand uh, that to a point because uh, a person can feel for his safety, the safety right. of his family. Um, and, you know, like you said at the beginning, uh, we need to pray for this gentleman um, because he's taking a huge risk by uh, deciding to really break the, the, not the law, but break the standard operating procedure of the Washington uh, political machine yes. and tell the yes. truth uh, to somebody with a platform to uh, expand that to an audience. And what uh, I hope the best for him, I pray that he is safe. And I hope that, I mean, if he chooses not to continue giving information, then, um, you know, that's his choice. And we thank him for what he has done or if she has done. But what we can't uh, do is get angry and upset because, um, you know, this is how it works. Yeah, I know. Um, no, it, it, it's he was a little short with me, and, and because um, uh, because I'd asked him, you know, uh, more about his situation than than anything else, and he said, "Look, just leave me. Just I'm fine. Leave me alone." And you know, he's always been as long as I've known him. He's always been a a, a fighter and and such. But one thing that I in my heart I was I was really looking at was. Uh, I, I, I've been receiving a lot of emails about, well, geez, Alsterman has got a White House insider. He's got a Wall Street insider, um, and, and there doesn't appear to be any type of, uh, you know, danger with with these people. Well, you know, I don't honestly, I don't know about those people. I, I don't know. I do, I do know that 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 this individual, um, as a Christian, and, and we actually prayed together um, uh, during our meeting because he's worried about his family. He's worried about the, the series of events. And, uh, um, that's really kind of a, a and, and it's, wow. You know, I mean, it's, it's sad really, when we have, uh, an out of control government and what makes it worse is when people decide to speak out against the corruption, which is the normal, which should be the normal. Uh, they are killed. They are tortured. Uh, their families, killed right. and tortured, threats, constant harassment. Um, you know, how, how would you feel to live a life always looking over your shoulder, wondering if literally the men in black are going to come and kill you? Yeah, and, and that's kind of where he stands. You know, and people have asked, well, why doesn't he just go public? And I received, actually from a, uh, from a very well-respected columnist, a former columnist at I'm not going to mention that. I'm not even going to, but I received a, an, an email from a columnist saying, if this man had any guts, he would resign and go public with the information. Well, okay. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to extend into this, but go ahead. No, I had a question about this. Every time this, this comes up because the person chooses to remain anonymous, uh, people question, well, then it's not a real person. Or if you can't, you know, provide proof or, you know, a name, right. and your information is just disregarded. But you know what? Uh, when you think about it, what, all the information that we get, aside from, you know, what's written in the Bible, um, all the information we get from any outlet uh, comes from someone. And, and a lot of times, uh, the best sources are the ones that remain anonymous. Um, but regardless, this is the source's uh, choice. And to... to ridicule or mock or um, say that the information is not true because the person does not want to be named, I think is a rush to judgment. And regardless of who gives you the information or whether you know who it is or don't know who it is, 
and take the, just take the information to, to prayer. You'll get your answers. You'll find out. You'll get your confirmations, whether it is real information or not. And, and that's the best and only advice I have. Yeah, I, I agree. And um, one thing that he did say, I've got to tell you this, is is that um, uh, the apparently the, the brass at the Department of Homeland Security, it's rather Hoover-esque. And, and that was his term. Well, actually, my term, our term together. We came up with that. And folks, you remember the? Uh, you may recall if you've studied history about uh, how Hoover ran the FBI. He had files on everybody. Well, according to according to this gentleman, uh, uh, the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI both uh, have their files on the majority of people in public office. And what's in the files? A lot of the information could compromise these elected officials. And I'm talking about sexual stuff and i'm not talking about normal sexual things i'm talking about abhorrent sexual behavior um just as one of many potential compromising situations but that seemed to be a predominant one this is why uh, a lot of times and we discussed this at, at, at length this is why that uh, some of these senators and, and elected officials congressmen have not come forward or have not pressed certain issues because they know that there's a smoking gun that could be used against them, not just to destroy their careers, but to put them in jail or, or to even, uh, you know, have them lose their family, lose their job, lose everything they, they've got. Um, and, and there's this huge sense of, of egotism, I, I guess, for, uh, I, I don't know what else, how else to describe it, where uh, on our elected officials, by our elected officials, but, that was one thing that he did say, but the the the, the nut. And by the way, those of you joining us and, and have, have heard this story before, heard me reference my source over the last couple of weeks. Our contact in the middle of the night was the culmination of a series of contacts that had uh, had taken place over the course of the last thirty in the, within the last thirty days. And he told me to hold on. I mean, he, you know, before he said, don't take anything public. I guess I jumped the gun a little bit and did earlier. So, uh, but, but, uh, what he said was there's something up and, uh, um, uh, there's, there's something in, in, in the works. It's economic in nature. And, uh, let's yeah. spit it out. You know what? Do you want me to spit it out? I, I, I mean, yeah, let's, uh, go back a couple steps here because you went from one subject to another uh the economic stuff this is what is important here that, that's right the, the information the, that is key I, okay to give you an example last uh, the, during our conversation they said there's going to be some economic news it's not going to be true and it's going to be typical of a false flag event this is going to be one of <laughs> uh, one of many false flag events of yeah. our economy and i want to clear i want to say this to the listeners uh, I called you this morning and we were talking and you mentioned that to me. Uh, and I said, Oh, did you see the, the new unemployment numbers? No. And you said no. And, and that it was interesting how that worked yeah. out. But so that, no, that, so, you know, look, I, I'm, I'm putting this together. I just, I asked for everyone's, uh, your prayers too, because I'm trying to articulate the things he said. Um, you saw how it worked last time when I had, uh, um, Given some information out, and all of a sudden, I'm I'm saying that uh, you know the president would, uh, you know, there'd be a false flag type of an assassination, and and I, it, those weren't even my words. I mean, it, right. it just was, it was I mean, skewed. So, I I really want to be very careful and very specific when I when I put this out, and I'm really again I'm just uh, evaluating what uh, what I what I need to do, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna the reports for forthcoming. Please just have patience with me. Uh, there's a lot of heavy information in here. I don't know. I, I just just have patience. It, it will come out. Um, I will have it tomorrow, uh, you know, or within the next uh, uh, 12 to 24 hours. Okay. And, and the main, uh, you know, the meat and potatoes is watch for economic events and economic false flag events, something like we're going to get into right now the unemployment rate yeah let's let's do that because and this is uh pretty interesting um this is out of ap by the ap i have a bunch of different angles a bunch of different audio clips um explaining this okay. now what i want to do first 
is start with uh, April or May uh, 4th of 2012 on MSNBC. The, the job numbers came out, and uh, in April they added 115,000 jobs, and the unemployment rate uh, was at went to 8.1 percent. Okay, now this is the audio that they had from that day, April, uh, from the April jobs report. CNBC's you, Brian Sullivan's here. He is live at CNBC Global Headquarters. He's got the numbers. Not hearing good things about them. Yeah, it is, it is not a good number, guys. I do appreciate the rush, but there's plenty of other fine bands. Wilco, Radiohead, always appreciate it. Okay. Anyway, no. we'll come next. Let's move on. All right, 115,000 jobs created last month. That is well below the consensus estimate. That is a terrible number. The unemployment rate did drop to 8.1%, but only, guys, because fewer people are in the workforce. You've got to be looking for a job to really be counted. The labor force participation rate, basically the number of people out there just looking for work or working, 63.6%. All in all, a lousy number. This is not good politically. It's also maybe a call to action by the Federal Reserve to have to think about doing a third round of quantitative, oh you know, gosh. QE3, which you know, is not a ship. Oh, my gosh. You know, did you hear that, guys? They said uh, the April job or the April unemployment report. They added 115,000 jobs. That they said it was well below uh, what they, the average or what is expected. And that, that these were terrible numbers. Well, we just had the highest jump in unemployment history, or I'm sorry, in the last 29 years of any month in the last 29 years. And you know how many jobs were added? 114,000. A thousand jobs less than that April number that was so terrible. Okay, and let me connect this again to, to the uh, to the to my source. It's not the numbers. It's not the economic. I mean, it's not the the uh, the false numbers. It's not the economy. I mean, it's not the unemployment numbers. We, that is, this is a trial balloon. Mm -hmm. It, it, the importance in this announcement is not the numbers. They could have affixed any, any number to it, 7.8, 6.2, whatever. The fact that they had taken this and made it public to the American people, that's the issue. It's, it, again, it's not the numbers because we all know the numbers are a crock. We all know that it's, the numbers are at least 100 to 150, even 200% higher and that's 7.8% or even 8%. It's the fact that they announced this as a trial balloon, and you can even call it a false flag type of operation. No. It's, you know, it's, it is. It's, it's, it's a lie by the government, just like Libya in the video is a lie. It's not about the numbers. It's about the fact that they did this. That's what everyone is missing. See, and, and you, you listen to people like Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity, you know, that's great. They talk, well, the numbers are wrong. Of course they're wrong. But why? What's behind that announcement? It is to, it is to, it's, it's as if, you know, when you, if you, if, if you've got kids and, uh, and, you know, you've got a, a, a blueberry pie on the table and, uh, you notice that half the blueberry pie is gone and your child's sitting there with, with a, a face full of blueberry and you say, did you, were you in the pie? No, of course not. Well, the evidence is clear right there. He's not, you know, obviously he's not telling the truth. It's obvious that they're not telling the truth. But what, what's behind that not telling the truth thing? What's behind that? What's the motivation here? What, what, where are they going with it? Well, they're attempting to see how much they, they can, uh, um, the, the American people, what can they buy? Yeah. How much are they going to, are they going to, how much of that are they going to uh, accept? And here's a one minute clip of Joe Scarborough from this morning reacting to this jobs numbers report. Now, it's only a minute and it's important. So. Here it is. Hey, welcome back to Morning Joe. We're still scratching our heads now. These numbers, Willie, we're talking about, you look at all the, you look at the matrix, you look how, how it's set up. These numbers don't make any sense. We need more explanation. We're reading through the report in great detail right now because 114,000 jobs were added. 
growth, which is below population growth. And a lot of people who projected that number, as Miles said, said if it comes down at about 113, 120, Anemic growth. you get about 8.1% unemployment. Yeah, 8. And now we've had a major tick down to 7.8% unemployment. So uh, we're still working through this. And this is in a time when we're seeing the worst long-term unemployment in, in recent history. And, and the participation rates are historically low. There is an uptick of 0.1%. I'm sorry, that's insignificant. These numbers don't add up. You said Jack Welch, who has been called by many the CEO of the past quarter century, a guy that we know uh, very well. Jack Welch has an opinion on this. He has a tweet that's being widely retweeted, and I, I read from Jack's certified Twitter account. Unbelievable job numbers. These Chicago guys will do anything. Can't debate, so change numbers. Okay. And you heard that... Uh, Brzezinski's daughter's reaction to that claim of the job numbers being manipulated. And there was also an article out of Yahoo uh, Finance uh, where this was brought up and the manipulation of numbers. And uh, Hilda Solis said that she was insulted to hear that because she, uh, we have a very professional civil service. I have the highest regard for our professionals that do the calculations at the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, they are trained economists, and I say to be insulted at the claim of the numbers being manipulated uh, is absurd because the way they calculate the numbers are is a manipulation equals a manipulation in the final result anyway, without right. doing what Obama did and basically saying you know the unemployment rate's eight point one no it's not it's seven point eight now run with that story. Well, I, I think, it, yeah, and I think it's important for people to understand how these are calculated and just very quickly because I know that this makes a lot of people go to sleep and their eyes glaze over, but unemployment figures are calculated by a, um, a part of the department, only a part of the Department of uh, Labor, and, and that's from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, or BLS. You're going to see that band, you know, banding about uh, quite often here. The actual data on unemployment is gathered by the Census Bureau. That's where the actual data on unemployment is gathered. The calculation of unemployment rates using modern concepts goes back to the 1930s. But at that time, there was no standard for how the figures were, were calculated. The first national survey of unemployment started in 1940 and was called the Monthly Report of Unemployment, which was later renamed the Current Population Survey, or CPS. That is still in use today. So that, that's the background. The unemployment rate is calculated not by adding up those who are on unemployment, nor is it calculated by examining tax records or whatever. The information is gathered from the Current Population Survey, CPS. Okay, remember, that was back, started back in the, uh, right after the 1940, which interviews a probability sample of 60,000 households that vary by location, vocation, sex, race, and so on. The uh, BLS, or uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, calculated that this is a specially, this specially selected sample of population yields results that are close enough to the actual value as not to distort the total unemployment picture. So, if 10% of the 60,000 respondents were unemployed, then BLS will estimate that about 10% of the total workforce is unemployed. Now, there's some adjustments made to that, such as seasonal employment. But that's how the unemployment... Mm -hmm. So they're not counting every person. They're not saying, okay, how many people are unemployed, collecting unemployment? That, that's, that's not even, that's not even figure into this. Households are surveyed for four consecutive months, and then they are not surveyed for eight months. They are then surveyed for another additional four-month period, and then there are new households entering and old households leaving the survey at all times. So it's a fluid, dynamic thing. Now, the CPS survey does not ask whether the person being interviewed is unemployed. It asks a series of questions regarding recent work-related activity. That's how they get this figure. So the civilian non-institutional population consists of Americans aged 16 years or above who are not institutionalized and are not inmates. Each American is classified as employed, unemployed, or not in the labor force. So the bottom line, uh, the labor force, uh, let me just cut to the chase here where the, um, okay, a person is, I, I guess this is kind of a, a, a key statement here. 
A person is not considered actively looking for work unless he has taken direct action to seek employment in the last four weeks. Now, direct action is very specific. Direct action includes contacting an employer directly through filling out an application, sending a resume, going to interviews, contacting friends or relatives for leads, or using an employment agency of some kind. A person who reads want ads, for example, if you just sit at home and read want ads, or you check online search job sites, uh, even if you do it every day or twice a day or every hour or every day, you are not figured into those numbers. So it's easy to reduce or increase the number of people who are no longer in the labor force. In other words, those numbers can be easily skewed, manipulated, and made to what it's good. But it involves complicity on the part of the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So then you look at the Bureau of Labor, Labor Statistics, and you told me, Joe, that some of the people working there are big Obama donors, I yeah. believe. Well, there was a report on Drudge today that said the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, at least two economists at the Bureau of the Labor Statistics, have contributed to President Barack Obama's campaign. Henry Frazes. Uh, Frazes? Okay, Frazes. Whatever. Oh, whatever. Okay. Have contributed $2,000 to Obama and 9000 to the DNC over the last three election cycles. Uh, during his time at BLS, uh, Harley has published a number of papers, including his most recent how to think about time use data. Um, well, I think second, I can, yeah, go ahead. Go Stephen ahead. Phillips of Washington, D.C. has contributed $270 to Obama during 2012 cycles, mm -hmm. according to his li LinkedIn profile. Phillips served as an economist at the BLS between June 2009 and July 2012. He was responsible for examining the impact of Obamacare uh, on health care North American industry classification systems. Okay. Well, that, okay. So, so we have yeah. federal uh, em employees donating to. Is that not illegal? If they are employed by the federal government, uh, I, I don't. Uh, no, I don't think that's illegal. I think that's okay. a little bit. Uh, that, that's a, a tad on the. Uh, uh, you have to look at the morality of it, but, but you know what? Both sides are responsible for that, or the ethics of that. But both sides are responsible for that. Um, to today, uh, released by the Congressional Budget Office. Uh, it was announced that the federal government notched a $1.1 trillion deficit in the fiscal year of 2012, the fourth straight year of over $1 trillion, uh, according to a preliminary estimate uh, from the CBO office released today. It's still an improvement over 2011 when the deficit reached $1.3 trillion, and it mar uh, marks the lowest deficit of President Obama's four years in office. <laughs> well, geez. One point over one trillion dollars, and I'm sure that's not, it's not obviously not including any Obamacare numbers, as that won't be implemented until 2013. Right, right. And, uh, and and again, it's not. You might, ladies and gentlemen, you might think, well, geez, this is partisan politics we're talking about, or this is, and that's rare uh, that we get into. Well, I, I mean, again, what's the importance of this? Because we all know the economy is hurt. We, we, the economy is very, very bad. And, uh, as Ann Barnhart had said, it's a mathematical certainty that we can't get out of this this morass that we're in. No, this there's but but the reason we're talking about this is, is again because uh, just imagine this. Uh, you know, the, the the your child with the, with the blueberry pie all over his face saying, "I'm I didn't do this," and that's our government saying this is the this is the unemployment rate. And they've got, you know, blueberry pie all over, all over their faces. It, yeah. It's it's the attempt, or it's the, the continued hubris. Patterns. Yes, and the hubris behind the statement. It's The importance, obviously, it's, it's important that we've got 22. The actual rate, if you go to shadow, uh, shadowstats.com, there are detailed explanations, for example. Shadowstats.com, you can, you can get all of the education that you can absorb in one day or one weekend because there are different kinds of un um, UE rates, unemployment rates like U3, U6. Uh, for example, U6 is the measure of unemployment used until about 20 years ago. That held steady at 14.7%. U3 is one of the most, uh, uh, U3 is the, is the current rate used, I believe, and that's one of the most manipulated figures in politics right now. And it's all political. It's all, it's all theater. Yeah. So, but, but, but that, this is that's being important. Used. Yeah, it shows the continued pattern of how much, you know, the government will lie to us to get their uh, agenda 
through, and this uh, is being used against Mitt Romney. Right. They're saying that you know this cancels out his him beating Obama in the debate, and uh, this shows that Obama is com- competent, as this AP report states, and is making a huge uh, you know impact on the recovery. Uh, you know, and we should we will continue right. to see this pattern. Blah 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 blah. Um, but no, it's all smoke and mirrors. It doesn't matter what the U.S. jobless rate is right now because the dollar is becoming more worthless by the day because Absolutely. the global economy is crashing uh, at a rapid pace as uh, the Republic of America is being destroyed and turned into a democracy of communism, socialism. It's not even a democracy. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a mixture. Of, yeah. it's, a, it's actually, yeah. It, well, it's, demo- democracy across the world is, is breaking apart. Right. Uh, the Republic of America is being dismantled from within, and we are seeing the effects uh, of the economy. QE3, as you heard from the clip, we QE, played first. We, we, what we should call this, really, we should have a standard language for our show. I think quantitative QE3, QE3 yeah, yeah. Uh, QE indefinite or something like that, but we understand that that's for an indefinite period of time or until the economy crashes. Yeah, and um, you and, know, and, and let me t- let me use this opportunity too, folks. We want to hear from you. This is our our um, our personal free for all Friday. Uh, it's not casual Friday because obviously, well, yeah, yeah it's for you. No, it's a free for all Friday. It's a free for all Friday. To borrow about to borrow that Rush Limbaugh thing. Anything you want. Call in, give us 661-244-9839, uh, and we will take your calls. And um, We ask that you be brief, though, or not brief, but concise in, in whatever point you want to make or question you want to ask. And uh, uh, if if you can, try to call from a landline phone um, or a, a cell phone with a good signal so you don't sound like you're talking from a submarine. And some of the other stories we're going to cover tonight is uh, FEMA to mobilize for mass fatality yes. Yes. planning. Um, also, uh, <laughs> yeah, a TSA agent steals five hundred and twenty dollars to punish passenger. Again, this is uh, that might, this might not sound like a lot. Uh, it's really not the story itself, because we could we could have stories like I this mean, all that, day long. Yeah, there's a story every. I mean, ten dollars a day. Right. It's what's behind this. Again, uh, it's a, it's the headline. The headline is is, is certainly this is a surprise. Or not a surprise, but the, the, but it's what's behind this. It's a continuing course of conduct that's actually embraced by the TSA. And you might think, well, now the TSA doesn't want this. No, they are not punishing TSA agents who are acting against uh, would-be travelers, and especially those who complain. If you want to complain about the TSA, you're going to, you're going to be punished, so to speak. And and that we have to expose this because we will not submit, we will not comply. We are going to exercise civil disobedience at the TSA if if we are uh, if we have to uh, fly commercially. Uh, we are going to say no. We're not going to comply. It's within our constitutional rights to refuse to. And of course, at that point, um, you know, it's up to them whether whether uh, they'll, they'll let us on, and it's up to us uh, to the extent that we're going to allow them to touch us and, and it's not going to happen. So, uh, <laughs> dang right. It's not going to yeah, happen. Exactly. Uh, um, also so. tonight, hospital employees jobs in jeopardy if they don't get flu shot. Oh yes. In Colorado, uh, hospital employees across the state are being threatened with their jobs. If they don't take the mandatory flu shot by the end of the year, this requirement is being implemented now, even though the state of Colorado only requires more than half of all employees to receive the vaccination. The mandate for all employees doesn't take effect for several years, but that doesn't matter. They're going to implement the hospitals are going to implement the policies anyway. Now, these healthcare workers feel they are being given a choice: get a flu shot or lose your job. I don't want to get the flu shot, and to me, it seems I'm getting forced to be. Uh, to put a virus into my body that I object to, said one of the hospital employees uh, who did not want to be identified. This new state health regulation requires flu shots for healthcare workers to be phased in over the next several years. Right now, 60% are required. Now, this is not just uh, in Colorado. This is happening all over the United States, um, that not only hospitals, uh, at different uh, industries across uh, the spectrum of business, and I have some videos on, or some videos, some audio news clips 
on vaccines and these mandatory programs, what the, they say, and uh, also some of the effects um, and the doctors who give and push these flu shots onto people at the same time admit they would not give them to their children or take them themselves because of the dangers. Right. Now, uh, folks, go ahead and, and play the one, uh, the one clip. I, I listened to this, and I thought, wow. Uh, it's a very important clip because we are going to be faced under Obamacare, regardless of what happens with the elections, regardless of anything under this Obamacare, this mandate, we're going to be faced. We, you and I, folks, are going to, are, are going to, be, are going to be forced to make some decisions in 2013, and I, regardless of who, who's in office. I have two clips. Uh, uh, one is for the 2000. 12 to 2013 flu shot program and, and this one, one i'll play now is okay. uh shot in the arm flu shot now mandatory for some now, now folks after this clip it's two minutes and 10 seconds long after this clip we'll come back and take your phone calls yeah here we go well a major area health network has a new policy in place it is designed to keep its workers from getting you sick Anytime you visit their hospitals and clinics, Jordan Burgess live with the change and its hope for impact. Jordan? Well, hospitals are supposed to be places where you get better, not get sick. But that's not always the case, and that's why the Kettering Health Network is taking a step to try to cure disease and not spread it. Walk through any hospital and you'll find so much soap and disinfectant you could swim in it. But even that's not always enough to keep germs from spreading. If they come to work and they've got a cough but they just can't miss work that day, it, it can be transmitted to the vulnerable patients. That's why the Kettering Health Network is joining others in now requiring all employees and volunteers to get a flu shot this year. The thought is if they don't have the flu, they can't give it to you. If uh, healthcare workers are vaccinated, that there's less transmission of flu from the healthcare workers to patients. You would think those in the medical field would be first in line for flu shots, but just like the rest of us, some are hesitant to get the shots for various reasons. There are a lot of misconceptions about the flu vaccine. Among those are that the vaccine can make you sick. Or you cannot actually get the flu from the vaccine. So I think when that happens, people are maybe getting an incidental infection, something that's just a coincidence and was not really related to the vaccine. Another is that the flu isn't a big deal. And other people just say, well, the flu is not that bad. I, I don't need the vaccine because it's just like the cold. But influenza can actually make people very, very sick. And that's the last thing needed for those in the hospital who are already suffering. We never really know at what point it's going to hit each year, but we know it hits every year. Uh, so it's best to get the flu shot early. Now I'm told exception. Wow. Yeah. And uh, the question needs to be asked, if they can forcibly push or make you participate in their health care program, if they can forcibly make you take vaccinations or poisonous toxins in your body. Uh, and fluoride in your water and yeah. everything else. What know. will be next? I mean, and where is the limitations? Right. I mean, obviously, we know where it's going, the eventual mark of the beast system, and that's, you know, the, the end, the culmination of all this. But uh, this, con this continuation of their Obamacare's policy, the government in general, uh, pushed by the UN, the Bill and Melinda Gates of the world, uh, the Henry Kissinger depopulation agenda, the eugenicist, um, you know, this continued force, you know, do what I say. If, if you're not, if you don't do what we say, uh, you don't have your rights anymore. You are a criminal now. Um, and, and it's just completely ridiculous. And this is how they are going to continue to divide us and continue to, uh, push, you know, one part of society further into the, you know, head in the sand, gone beyond any repair where you can't get them back. Uh, and those people will turn on the people who refuse and oppose, you know, saying, just get the vaccine. Uh, you know, and if you don't, you know, they take the appropriate measures. Who knows? Pretty soon they'll be SWAT team in your house. If you don't get vaccines, they'll come door to door. We saw clips. There are clips, um, from last school year where 
parents refused to let their kids get shots in school, and the school department came to their house with police trying to give the shots to the kids at their own homes. Right. And, and it was yeah, twisted yeah. by the local media when the parents, when one of the parents swore and yelled at the worker saying they had no right to be on her property trying to inject their child after she already said no. Uh, they twisted it and made her seem like she was some kind of crazy loony tune, which really, uh, you have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You have the right not to be forced to do things in this country, or at least you used to. Well, except in Rhode Island, where today they became the first state uh, nationally to mandate seasonal flu shots for all healthcare workers. Now, if you're in the healthcare field and you uh, are living in the state of Rhode Island, you must, you must get a flu shot. And this, despite the objections of healthcare workers and unions and Rhode Island affiliates of the American uh, ACLU, or I'm sorry, the ACLU. Um, of course, the health director in Rhode Island, Michael D. Fine, uh, filed these new regulations requiring seasonal flu shots for doctors. Now imagine that. You're a doctor, you're in the healthcare field, you're, you're up in Rhode Island. And Rhode Island law says, as a doctor, you are required to take the flu shot, period. Now, what would happen if you don't? Well, um, you know, you, you can be sanctioned. In fact, um, now, look, workers, there is a, there's a clause in here where workers can be exempted from the requirement for specific medical reasons. So if you know the language to, to talk and get your way out of it, you can. Now, they can also sign a form saying that they refuse to get immunized, but those who are not immunized will have to wear a surgical mask for each patient contact during uh, a period when the flu is widespread. And that period of time um, would be a time period de declared by the health director. So in other words, <laughs> It, it, it's it, it's just absurd at its at its very core, and you're going to see this taking place now all across the country. Rhode Island is 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 kind of a, is the first state out of the out of the shoot to do this, but what you've got is you've got the federal angle and you've got the different states now. Here it comes. So uh, just be very wary about that. Um, so there, there you have it. Let's let's go to the phones. We're going to take uh, area code two one four. You've been on hold the longest, and uh, we thank you for waiting. Thank you for your patience. Area code two one four. You're on with Doug and Joe Hagman. Hello, gentlemen. Jan and Dallas. Hi, Jan. Hi, Jan. Hi. Um, I had the same thought as Sarah, as she said last night, and um, I also believe these people play for keeps. No, no. Jan, Jan, hold on a second. Sarah Palin, you mean? Yes. Okay, okay. Because, uh, folks, in case you haven't heard about this, Sarah Palin, and, uh, um, yeah, I haven't. Uh, okay, and, and I caught this, and I think we met. My, so, Jan, did we did we talk about this yesterday? Because I think I might have mentioned this. Yeah. Okay, just, folks, joining us tonight that haven't heard this, and I'm sorry to interrupt, Jen, but let me just give every the listeners the the, uh, the information. Uh, on Sean Hannity, when Sarah Palin appeared and was talking about the debate, she said, these guys in the Obama camp, and this is a direct quote from Sarah Palin, they're not going down without swinging. They're going to pull something. That's what she said uh, to stay in power. That's, they're going to pull something. So for, that, for her to say that, so go ahead, Jen. That, that's the backdrop. Yes, I um, had the same, similar thought. Um, and also, I believe that these people play for keeps. And based on uh, your stories, uh, Will Net Daily, all the people that they report, uh, Mr. Breitbart, um, before he died, I just believe that these people are very, very serious. They're miles, miles ahead of us. And um, I just thank the wisdom of your informant that he is using and to say blessings to you and your family and for all the wonderful work you do to keep us informed and meticulously so, which is what must be very laborious for you, but you do it with love and I just appreciate that. So 
Wow. Thank Have a you. good weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, as always, thank you so much for your faith, and and it's so important too. Uh, Jen, I, I you know, you, you mentioned something about the meticulous part, and that that's very important to me because, um, if, you know, we can we could run out of here and kind of do a rant, or, or do a, um, you know, just throw a whole bunch of of stuff at you without really vetting the information or without really considering the implications of what we're saying. And I'll tell you what, uh, it, it makes us look bad. It makes us look sloppy. And it, it's not fair to you either. But uh, I really appreciate your, your vote of confidence, Jan. Oh, you're more than welcome. And um, I'll look forward to the article when you have finished it. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jan. Thanks for waiting so long, too. You know, she's. We, we've got such great people. Yes, we do. You know what? We're again. We're we're taking everyone's call in the order in which it was received. So we're going to go right to Jason. Jason, how are you today, sir? Not bad. How about you, Doug? Not bad at all, sir. What's on your mind? Good. Um, I just. Oh God. We're coming close, guys. I'm telling you, we're coming really, really close. Uh, have you, have you, have either of you guys ever read the book, uh, The Harbinger? No, but uh, uh, did you ask? Did you ask me about that yesterday or the day before? Because we, we, I, I we've have seen several interviews from the author, and um, yeah, and I didn't tell you this today, but I did. Uh, I asked my wife to order the book and the DVD, the two things uh, yeah. for us. It's that you all of us have to understand that um, uh, our nation's under judgment by God. Um, none of us want to believe it, and it's it's hard to believe. But uh, Doug, I think it's interesting that your Homeland Security guy all of a sudden just you know he's he's not going to say anything more because the time has come. We can't turn away. We can't. It's just it's. We're under judgment. We're under judgment. And all we can do is save as many souls as we can. And that's what your show is doing. You, you are reaching people that might not hear the gospel with, with media. You're doing a media ministry. And that's incredible, guys. I'm telling you, that's, that's really incredible. You are, you, your, your show is a hybrid of news and and prophecy and God's message all wrapped up in there. So you're doing something that's very important, guys. Just keep it up, okay? All right. God Jason, bless you. God Jason. bless you. Thank you, my friend. Uh, as always, it's great to hear from you, and it's uh, you're you're a you're a fabulous patriot. Stay safe out there. Uh, let's go to uh, seven three one. Is that on hold okay. the longest? Yeah, I, there. boy, I'll tell you what, this board is a little off. Okay, there you go. Seven three one. You're on with Doug and Joe Hagman. Hey, Doug and Joe. This is Lucy in Tennessee. Hi, Lucy. And I, uh, Howard, um, you remember when we talked about the Olympics and that maybe what would come out of that unexpectedly. Yeah. Well, here in Tennessee, uh, meningitis is popping up, killing people. Really? And also it's in uh, several other states, and I just started thinking, I wonder if that is a result of something that was done and carried, you know, back here from the Olympics. Well, uh, Lucy, I I have a report on what you're talking about. Um, if you go to Russia today, <clears throat> RT, there's an uh, article, Thousands of Americans at Risk of Deadly Meningitis. And it says that thousands of patients who got steroid injections in 23 U.S. states may be at risk of acquiring the rare fungal infection meningitis, <clears throat> Excuse me, which has left five people dead in the latest outbreak. The fungus has so far sickened 35 Americans who took steroid shots for back pain across six U.S. states. Is uh, is Pennsylvania in there? Um, I have not seen the list of okay. states. All right. Well, Lucy, so, so w- w- your position is perhaps that, uh, and I'm not even sure how meningitis is spread. Uh, do you know, Lucy? Is it spread 
by body fluid or Lucy, are you with us? Nope, it looks like she dropped off. Well, uh, Lucy, thank you. Uh, thank wait, you. Let's see. Did, did we did we lose her? We apparently we did lose her. Yeah. Lucy, uh, thank you for for bringing that story out. And I, we didn't hang up on you. It just it just happened. And uh, I have the story on my stories for the day we're going to get into. And you can call back. We'll take your yes. Yeah, we'll take your call again. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I guess I, you're going to uh, you probably should tell me to keep my hands away from the the switchboard. I might have accidentally hit a hit a uh, button I shouldn't have. I don't know. But go uh, ahead, let's go, go ahead to and another this. call. We got area code four eight four. You're live with the Hagman and Hagman report. Four eight four. Hello. Yeah, yes. you're up. You're on with Doug and Joe. This is Doug and Joe. Yeah, it certainly is, my friend. What's on your mind? Well, I was listening. I didn't. I didn't realize you were talking to me. I apologize. Um, I used to work at a pharmaceutical company here in Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, one of the largest in the world when the H one N one broke out. Uh, I worked on the equipment in the suite where they actually made the inoculant. Where they came in, they they injected the eggs with the the serum, incubated it, and all that kind of stuff. That building was a grant from the federal government for over fifty three million dollars. I found it kinda odd that we would have that type of a, a breakout at that particular time. The reason I'm bringing that up is the company I worked for, uh, Sanofi Pasteur, had some very specific buildings up in this area, and it's all injectable pharmaceuticals. They've been doing it for a very long time. They're really good at it. Um, and there are probably a, no less than a dozen different types of flu. My questions at that time, and nobody can answer them, how do they know which one's going to come up for that year? And then one thing I paid attention to is when we were making the inoculants, because we made them for all different kinds of flu, um, they labeled each one. So you would know you're making a batch for X inoculant. And we would make a certain strain for a certain part of the world, another strain for another part of the world. And then each one of these, because they were labeled um, differently, typically it was where that flu broke out. The H1N1 was labeled... Los Angeles. Now, I'm not an expert. I'm a low-level black uh, uh, blue-collar worker. Um, I don't have all the information, but the people that worked in that building knew some things that I didn't, and they would inform me on some of these lower-level things that nobody ever hears about. But I found that kind of odd too that that it was labeled Los Angeles. Well, I'll, I'll there's a lot of things going on right now. Tom, um, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to, uh, I don't know if you heard about this case where um, we infected a, uh, a third world country somewhere. with. Uh, we went over there and gave them vaccines 40 some years ago and infected uh, 4,000 plus of their citizens with, <coughs> with an STD. And the reason I, I believe they make different batches for different locations is because they put different uh, from what my research my research has shown, they put different chemicals in the different uh, um, shipments to test to see you know what the effects are. I, in my opinion, that's what I've come to to believe. Well, well, caller, continue with your with your statement because what I'm hearing is number one, you had information of what kind of cocktail vaccine they were going to make before they actually understood before it was publicly announced what the what the flu strain was. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Well I can tell you this that and, and I don't have the formula and I don't want to elude anybody to the wrong right. to the wrong thing. But what I can say is that I was there several several months, a large period of time before the H one N one broke out. The building was still being finished up. There were a lot of uh, of things that were still going on. Um when the H one N one broke out and you heard about it in the news, we had the seed in our building to start mass producing it within two weeks. I don't know what the what the rest wow. of the world got, but we had it pretty quick and I found it really odd. Like wow, that almost like it came directly from the C D C. 
Now, oh. I found it odd. I find a lot of different things odd. But this particular building is a manufacturing environment to make these things huge scale. I don't mean big scale. I mean huge scale. They were going to ramp up to cut 300,000 chicken eggs a day. Now, I know wow. that sounds like a lot, but until you're standing there and looking at these things pump through, you, the numbers don't register until you see the all of the eggs lined up and you're thinking, where do they get that many chicken eggs in a day? In a and day. And they did this every single day. Now, at the time I was there, we weren't ramped up to that. It was quite a bit less than that. But you get more than one shot per egg. Um, okay. There's right. a lot of processing, and I can say they do a really good job. I don't want to. I don't want to slap them around. It. You could literally eat off the floor in any one of those places. It was an ultra clean environment. We were in bunny suits. I mean, the whole nine yards. But at the same time, I kept wondering these things in the back of my mind. Are they doing this to pay off this building? I mean, we were shipping that stuff all over the world, and. Some of that stuff spoiled because they couldn't get it out to the people or didn't get it out or they didn't need it. So, you know, there were numbers that were coming through my head that were trying to add up, and they just weren't. I wasn't getting all of this, why they were doing such a large number of the vaccine. Now, we weren't the only ones in the world doing this. There were a lot of people doing this, especially in the United States. But it just, there were that many shots going on. One of the other questions that came to mind more recently, because I, it wasn't until I got that job that I actually woke up. And uh, fortunately for you guys, for for a lot of the other people that are awake, that have the voice, that have the ability to have the voice, right. that are out there trying to do this with the backgrounds that you guys have and the information you get. So I, I choose my websites and the people that I listen to pretty carefully, because I, I, I look at the information. I do backgrounds as much as I can on, on the people that are doing their talking. So I kind of kind of latch onto the, the information that way. Um, but getting back to the question that I had was, now if you look, they're ramming those flu shots down our throat or in our arms. And it used to be the flu shot was $35 a piece. And in some places I think you still pay for it. You go yeah. to CVS out here or... Some of the other places is free. Oh, we can't yeah. wait to stick you with it. And I haven't gotten a flu shot yeah. in years. Yeah, I we, haven't gotten a flu in even longer. Yeah, we, nor have we. And I, and I have to say this. My, I asked my doctor about this. Um, I said, um, I asked him, Gary, uh, his first name is Gary. I said, uh, are you, you going to get a flu shot? Um, he said, no. I said, well, why not? He said, no, I I don't want a flu shot. Now, uh, he did say, however, he would recommend the flu shot to people with health problems like me. And I said, well, look, if you're not going to get it, why should I? I mean, it just didn't make sense to me. If you're familiar with Dr. Oz, who's a ABC guy, goes on Good Morning America, right. yeah. there was that video that's been played around YouTube viral. Uh, you know, he said he would never give his wife or kids a flu shot. Yeah, so I, I, I find this uh, a level of disingenuousness here, not be, not just because of the uh, maybe a, a more fragile immune system because of, of overlying illnesses, but, but there's something else going on here. Now I'm not indicting my doctor or accusing him, but I just see this, 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 this uh, I don't know, we'll call her, you know what I'm talking about. It's like do as I say, not as I yeah. do. But but so where are we going with this? What are you thinking about this? Uh, I'm really curious because you're on the you were working on the inside of this. What do you, what do you think? Well, I've got I to go to your your specific uh, talk about your doctor. Um, I interviewed people in the building, people that work okay. there. Okay. Okay. So you're going to get this shot when it comes in? Nope. We're not going to get it either. I did not take it. My wife didn't take it. Nobody that we knew took it. I, uh, unfortunately, I found out some friends had taken it later, um, but I didn't know them at the time. So I guess where I'm going is I, I think it's a formula, and I've been racking my brains because I've been uh, – it's, it's kind of tough to explain. I have, I have a, a vast military background. I was in the Navy for, for over 12 years. Um, I was in law enforcement. I was in the Sheriff's Department for a while. 
don't want to give too much information because, you know, I know. I understand. Still, but no, I, I, so anyway. I, you were in law enforcement. Go ahead. I, 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 but, yeah. but it's, it's, it's just, there's, there's a lot of things going to happen. I don't think they're going to pick one virus. Uh, I'll, there's a lot of them out there they could choose from. I, I think they're going to play around for a while. Um, aside from, and my wife talk, and, and I talk about this every single day, aside from what's going on with the Earth itself as a planet, right. with the moon, uh, with the sun, as, you know, as an astral uh, body out there, aside from those things that we can't control, just the people that are in charge or the people that are in charge of the people in charge, Doing these little things is going to be bad enough, right? But I think that we're in some really serious trouble. Uh, I think that they're going to do all of these things all at once. It may seem like it's incremental, but it's it's happening. I'm I'm picking up that it's happening all, a lot of different places. Now I haven't seen drones here uh, flying over us. But I do keep my eyes up. I do see the chemtrail thing. I, you know, I mean, I go through the gambit of what everybody talks about out there. And I know that my wife's real tuned into it. She travels a lot more than I do. And she works for the federal government. That's as much as I'm going to say about that. Okay. Um, so she pays attention to what she's doing, where she's doing it, how she's doing it, and who's paying attention to her. And... When you have a cocktail, I think, is what's coming. This is, say, part A of a part B, C mixture. Um, and it may be that part A mixes with part B really well and does this. And in a different part of the country, maybe part A mixes with part C and does something else. I don't know. I know that I've had dreams and visions since I was a child about something that's coming on. And as soon as I woke up, I said, that's why. I've been seeing these things. That's why. So, I don't know. I may sound like a nut to some people. I sound like a nut to myself when I look in the mirror. I was like, I can't believe you're saying that. <laughs> but at the same time, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm not trying to stick something in your arm or anywhere else. Right. I'm right. just trying to do my thing, go to work and go home, you know, and pay my taxes. And right now, I'm doing okay. But we're preparing for the worst and praying for the best. And I pray to God I'm wrong. I really do. I pray to God what's going on in my mind is not going to happen. But I, unfortunately, well, know that God has, has shown me these things on purpose. One real quick question before we hit the break here, uh, caller. You sure. see, uh, You see anything, uh, you, given your uh, military and law enforcement background, are we going to have elections or are we going to have a false flag before the elections? What's your, what's your uh, take on it real quick? My my prediction is we're going to have a false flag. The reason is because we've got way too many foreign troops on our soil. Never had that before. And we got way too much of our military out of the country. We're screwed. Jeez. So we're going to have to fight to get it back, unfortunately. I hate saying that. Well, that, that's that's about right. And that's what we're getting right now. And uh, we're getting average people. When I say average people, we're getting blue-collar people that have their ear to the ground saying, hey, there's something not right, something coming down, something you know, perhaps before the election. Hey, thanks for the call, man, and uh, keep keep us uh, keep us in the loop. All right. Yes, gentlemen, you will hear from me again. Thank all right. You. Thank you. Thank you. We're right. up against the break uh, for the first hour. Uh, we'll be back after these few short messages. Stay there, yeah, people on hold. Calls, we'll yeah. be coming right back to you guys on hold. Survival of the fittest. In any and all situations, survival is your number one priority. That requires being tough and thinking smart. And the folks at Freeze Dry Guy are going to help you do just that. They have a long-range patrol ration entrees, what they call the Brick Pack. When you're in survival mode, it is absolutely the best item for your survival pack or bug out bag. You can go farther, faster, and carry more food with the LRP cold weather ration entrees. Not only do these long-lasting, durable entrees help sustain you or your family through the harshest environment or situation, they are by far the most delicious of their kind. No contest. With a variety of tasty entrees, you can't beat the LRP Brick Packs. Let Freeze Dry Guy help you in your survival situations. Go to freezedryguy.com. That's freezedryguy.com. Or call 866-404-3667. 
866-404-8863. That's 866-404-FOOD. Hi folks, Doug Hagman here. You might know me as the co-host from the Hagman and Hagman Report or as a frequent guest on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. If you're like me, you're tired and confused over today's headlines. You just don't know where to turn for accurate, concise information about really what's going on, what's truly going on in today's society. If you don't know where to turn for accurate, well-researched and properly vetted news, I've got a suggestion. In fact, it's a requirement. Bookmark Canada Free Press. That's canadafreepress.com on the Internet. It's just not for Canada. It's for news across the world. Judy McLeod, founding editor, has put together a vast array of talented writers like Kelly O'Connell, Daniel Greenfield, Dr. Eileen Johnson-Powell, a lot of guest columnists, very talented writers. Folks, that's Canada Free Press at CanadaFreePress.com. Now mobile-friendly, follow on Facebook, because without America, there is no free world. Our leadership team is reaching out to each and every one of you to save lives during the 2012-2013 non-optional mandatory flu shot season. Influenza is a very dangerous and contagious disease that can lead to hospitalizations and even death. It poses a serious threat to the safety of our associates and our patients. Consistent with our commitment to safety, Advocate Healthcare requires all of our physicians associates, volunteers, and visiting students to receive an annual flu vaccine. Advocate is seeking to protect the most vulnerable of our patients, which is in alignment with our faith heritage. In addition, we're also seeking to protect the public health of what we know to be a significant risk to some of the population members of our community. The goals of Advocate's mandatory flu vaccination program are to prevent transmission to our patients to protect their health and safety, as well as those of our associates. We estimate that Advocate can save several patients' lives this year if we establish this practice and we maintain a threshold of community immunity. The flu shot is the best weapon that a person can use to prevent contracting the flu virus and the experience of severe symptoms. Flu shot side effects are rare. You may feel a little irritation at the injection site but overall, that should be the only side effect that you experience. Seasonal flu shots are free for all advocate associates, physicians, and volunteers. Check our internet homepage for locations and times. You can also visit Employee Health for more information. The executive team is committed to leading this effort. I have Jessica here in my office, and she's going to give me my vaccination right now. And folks, welcome back to hour number two of the Hagman and Hagman Report. We did a, a little switch there. We played uh, the second clip was the Advocate South Suburban Hospital 2012-2013 flu shot program, and you heard it was non-optional, mandatory. Uh, and, Talk about a public service announcement, yes, huh? That's I, what I, it was. Wow. And that I want. This is the mindset of these people. I mean. It, it, non like, optional. Right. Non optional. Right. And we have uh, a caller, uh, Dr. Williams. Uh, we were uh, on his program. We were on not, his radio program yeah. on uh, a couple Wednesdays ago. And uh, Mr. Williams, are you there? Dr. Williams, Attorney Williams? Uh, Mr. Dr. Williams, hell. <laughs> How you doing tonight? Good. Uh, Sorry, I really... kind of came out wrong. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, look. For... Uh, for folks that are not familiar with with who you are, uh, if you don't mind, uh, well, this is Dr. Williams, uh, Michael Williams, uh, Dr. Michael Williams of the Patriot Report. We're on uh, Web Talk Radio, done right. And uh, uh, Doug and Joe Hagman were on our show last week, and uh, uh, basically we uh, threw our uh, our really, I tell you, incredible conversation looked at, you know, how the Democratic Party and and Nazi Germany actually is, is just following the same pattern. But 
Yes. It's a different yeah. conversation tonight, so we'll, we'll, we'll go there. Well, now, we, you have some information. You want to weigh in a little bit about the vac- vaccination uh, or vaccines and the, the virus or the uh, vaccination program, I believe. Is that right? Well, what I'm hearing right now, uh, it's not so much a vaccine, but, uh, I, mean, tell, I mean, tell me if you're hearing the same thing. Right now what I'm hearing as of, like, like last two weeks, everything has gone silent. I'm not okay. hearing much of anything anymore right now. I'm not hearing anything. I'm not hearing about DHS. I'm not hearing about TH- TSA. I'm not hearing much of anything right now. It's like there's a black hole of information. I mean, if you're hearing things, I'm not hearing it, and I usually get a lot of information from a lot of different sources, and I'm getting nothing. I, I know that that's true. A lot of the uh, customary sources have gone silent. Okay, now when I say customary, I'm talking about the average everyday source. Well, I, none of these sources are average, but your common sources where you'd get the you get a tip here and a tip there, watch this, watch that, all of a sudden, yeah, ours, it, it almost seems like the calm before the storm, doesn't it? Is that what you're kind of feeling? That's what I'm getting. Uh, I have, well, I, I know your background, and I've done work for NASA and the Department of Defense, and and, uh, and I'm saying I'm not deep into these organizations by no means. But, you know, and, that, and that's not where I'm getting my information from. But the fact is that, I, I, you know, I get certain people call me, certain people know information, uh, get information from other sources and so on and so forth. And, I mean, I mean, literally, it's like a blackout. Nothing is, I'm getting nothing. I mean, nothing is happening. Is there a historic? I mean, I mean, it's like nothing is happening. Right. But, but now, is there? Is there? Because I I know your background, and and, and folks, uh, Doctor Williams has got an incredible, incredible background. Uh, w- put it in the historical context, if if you have any context for which to put it in, it, it, does that mean that hey, we're we're looking at something coming down the pike here soon, or is it? I I really don't know. All I know is I'm getting a complete blackout, and, I mean, I, I put it this way, I, I've gone through some military training. Right. Uh, you know, I pay for my own. I've gone through some military training, and that is a, you know, what you learn through that training is yeah, when you're trying to create a situation or you're going to move on a situation, you black out the information. For operational you don't security. You, you don't want your opponents going to do. And right. And I tell you right now, this scares me more than anything else. No information at all. I mean, something yeah. has come down that says, you're not going to say anything to anybody, anyhow, anyway, so we can move all our chess pieces in place. That's, that's that, that, you know, we, we've talked about this on my show. That's a standard pencil movement. I mean... You're talking about vaccines. I mean, I mean, there's vaccines. There's, I mean, I mean, God, there's so many different angles that are coming at us. There's subliminal programming. There's vaccines. There's social programs. There's, I mean, they're coming up with so many angles that the American people do not know what's going on. And it's like, where do we turn? What do we do? I mean, do we fight? Do we don't fight? What do we do? I mean, what do we do? I mean, and they don't know what to do. And that is, I mean, a terror right now. If you ever watch, have you? Did you watch? Have you gotten the CD "Dreams of My Real Father" from Joel Gilbert? Um, I we yeah no uh, yes and no. I mean, we we know we know what. If uh, you watch a CD, you yeah. will be dumbfounded. Well, I mean, this 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 CD is so succinct in what Obama stands for and how he deceived the American people and the middle class and what they're doing to bring communism to the United States it is just, oh, my God. I, I, when I got done read, watching this CD, and then I, I'm going to say, you know, I, I didn't see the CD and just take that information on face value. Then I went and did my research. Right. And I came back, and I was like, everything I said was true. And 
yeah. what a world of hurt, like beyond, like you wouldn't believe. And uh, you know, unless we as Americans stand up now, I mean now, not a year from now, not two years from now, right? Unless we stand up now, I mean, we're, we're in more trouble than you can even possibly. But this way, America will, will actually be gone at that point if we wait two years from now. Yeah, we have. We're out of time at this point. We are out of time. We have to make a stand, uh, uh, ideological stand, and civil disobedience at the very least, because uh, those two are prerequisites for any type of uh, actual stand that we would make uh, in, in the three-part process of of rebellion or putting down the tyrant or uh, putting down the tyranny. So, you've got your ideological uh, and informational aspect and then of course your civil disobedience and then the third leg of that uh that table is is the actual uh, resistance but uh you can't do the number three well, without well, let's number put this way i i called joe yesterday i uh, i need some information to uh, contact my you know a couple other guests um and uh, actually i think it was day before yesterday but the fact was somebody reached in to my uh, isp Yep. You know, my, my emails don't reside on my laptop. They reside on my ISP. And your actual emails that you responded to me from were gone. I contacted the ISP, and they did not know what happened to them. They weren't even on the backups. They were gone. Yeah, I've heard that before, and and I'm I'm having problems with uh, with my uh, with my email as well. So, we, you know, uh, look, we know that there are people actually messing with us. Uh, when I, well, are actually uh, tampering with well, our. Well, they remove my contacts. They remove my contacts out in the environment. I mean, to around the world. I mean, I've lost multiple contacts. I mean, I, I mean, I, I receive a lot of emails every day. Yes. And, couple hundred every day or more but the ones that actually are important the ones like you and other individuals i'm not going to mention your names but the fact is why are those gone and not the rest of them i mean i know it i know it very well if you're going to wipe out you know a set of files you wipe them all out you don't wipe out selected files unless you go pick those out and you were gone that's well, why that i call joe Th that makes me feel real special. Thank you. He's not. That's not the first call I got like that. Yeah, I, I know. I know. Uh, so, so, we, Dr. Williams, what do you think? Is it, what's what's your gut telling you? I mean, I know you don't have a crystal ball. None of us do, but we know something's coming down. Is it going to be economical or economic? Is it going to be the third world war? Or, uh, what what what's your gut? I think it's going to be a combination of all. You know, it's, it's like, you know, we talked about before. It's a pincer movement. Right. I don't think it's going to be, I mean, it could be World War III. It, I mean, it's, 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 they're coming at us from every angle. I mean, Obama next day came down today and said, or yesterday, and said that, that you know, he got annihilated in, in the debate and said, you know, Obama's law, uh, lying. You know, I mean, I mean, they're coming at us from every angle. I mean, right. like I said, you know, but, you know, I mean, we're talking about vaccines, we're talking about TV shows, we're talking about commercials, we're talking about political programming, we're talking about wars, we're talking, they're coming to us from every angle, that way that we're confused, we don't know how to address the situation, you know, this this is a standard communist tactic, this is what Soviet Union did in World War, and during the Cold War. And you know, I'm saying these people, you know, Obama's real father. They're saying who his real father is. You know, I got to be careful what I say, but his real father, you know, n not Barack Obama Senior, but yeah, Frank Marshall. Yeah. Frank Marshall Davis. I'm going to say it according. Okay, to if you're willing to say it, then I'll, I'll go with it. But uh, card carrying, but anyways, Frank Marshall Davis. You know, and, and they've, you know, I mean. They've actually proven, you know, that, that the nose job, the face, everything, you know, the skull structure, everything is actually him. So, regardless, um, you know, well, this is done. where this man comes from. Oh, yeah. And if That's you were to watch his CD and, and, and see what actually, where he came from and how this, I mean, I was dumbfounded when I watched it. I was like, this is, this is Obama. 
Oh yeah. What he stands for? Okay. He he is a front man for a very global organization. I mean that yeah. that is bringing communism to the United States, and the American people don't realize what's happening. You're either too stupid, you're on the dole, or or or, or, or you're part of them. Plain and simple. Well, I uh, I would say that, I mean yeah to a certain extent uh, if if you're not doing your due diligence in uh, you know being aware with world events and looking. Uh, for alternative sources and searching for the <laughs> I'm sorry searching for the truth. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Doctor Williams, we got a lot of people on hold. We appreciate the call. God bless you. Tell, tell yeah, our pl- listeners what your, your yeah, yeah, plug your program. Well, where can we find you? Well, on? it's uh, well, it's the Patriot Report on uh, WebTalkRadio.net, uh, and uh, it's Doctor Michael Williams. And uh, uh, a quick response to your, yeah, I mean, your question again, uh, Doug. You know what I think is happening. Uh, again, you know, like I said, it's a pincer movement. I mean, they're coming out from all different angles. And by the time we figure out what's happening, it's going to be too late. Unless we stand up now, it's going to be too late. I mean, okay. that's, that's, look, you almost uttered the same phrase that my DHS contact said. By the time we really figure out what the plan is, it's going to be a done deal. Well, I don't care right now unless, you know, I, we're, we're selling more guns, more weapons, more everything in a month now than we did in all of 2010. I yes. mean, what's scaring these elitists is the fact that we're arming ourselves. That's the only thing that's keeping them at bay. That's the only thing that's keeping them at bay. I mean, I they're agree. afraid that they're going to do the same thing as the Japanese, uh, you know, here we thought that, you know, in World War Two, that there's going to be a gun behind every blade of grass, and I guarantee you, if these leaders do that, there is going to be. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, look, Doctor Williams, I pray and I pray very earnestly that that we don't see bloodshed, we don't have bloodshed, that we don't have to, that, that we can somehow pray our way out of this, work our way out of this. But you know what? I don't believe. Well, I pray the good Lord Jesus it comes down and just rescues us. I mean, and takes care of us like He promises He will, and I believe He will. But we have a trial and a tribulation to go through to actually reach that point, and I think we're going through that right now. Well, man, thank you. We appreciate your uh, input, Mister Williams, and we uh, look forward to talking with you again uh, soon. Yeah, we're we're gonna be we we were right. we're, we're gonna keep in contact, my friend. All right. I appreciate that. God right, bless. Have, you. have a good night now. Yeah, you God too. God bless you. Thanks for your Bye-bye. input. Bye. All right. That was Doctor Michael Williams. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, um, as we said, we were a guest on his show. You can yep. find them at webtalkradio.net. Uh, we have callers who have been on hold for thirty and forty minutes. We Let's thank you so much for being patient. We're going to area code four eight zero. Then we're going to go to. Uh, our area, Pennsylvania, uh, 480, you're on the air with the Hagman and Hagman Report. Hi, guys, it's Debbie. Hey, Debbie. Arizona. Good to yeah, talk. how are you? Very well, thanks. I, uh, I sit here on hold and I hear all this and it's, then it gets me off track, but I won't get off track, <laughs> I promise. Um, the meningitis deal, right. that is not easily, that you don't catch meningitis very easily. And meningitis is like, I think, like 10% of the population walks around with it all the time. But you get it from sneezes and coughs and that sort of stuff. But usually, um, you've, it's, you've got to have a, a cut and then come in contact with it. It's got to be more than just um, in the air. So I don't think that's, I think that when they said it came from steroid injections, that seems likely, very likely. So okay, I know if you get a brain injury, that can happen as well too. Then because maybe you have an open, an open surgical area to your brain, and then you pick up the virus, you know. But or, it's not that right. easily caught. It's uh, spread by uh, body fluids, bodily fluids like blood, saliva, or mucus, you mm-hmm. know that type of thing. Okay, uh, all right. Yeah, so yeah, it's not that easy. I don't think we have that here if we didn't get a steroid injection. You know what I mean? Right. Well. Mm, okay. um, but I did post a couple of things when they're talking about these uh, mandatory flu injections. I posted two posts on the 
on the um, on our on our post there. But um, for those people that aren't um, able to see the screen, I mean, I posted these uh, an hour ago. Um, the hospitals are in the United States are ridden with a with a bacteria called C, like Charlie, period diff D I F F C period diff, and that's a bacteria. And it comes because the hospitals are in the business of making money and profit, and they don't clean the rooms properly. And this is something that's like massive all over the United States, and you only find it in the United States. Really? It's because they're not keeping... Mm -hmm, it has to do with a housekeeping issue. I've had two friends, one nearly died, went in for a simple procedure and nearly died, and she, they kept telling her there must be something wrong with her. She's getting better. Her abdomen was swollen up like 10 times its size. She nearly died. Wow. And she ended up with these horrible scars all over her, and it's, a, it's an intestinal thing. And, okay. and, but I, I posted two links, and so what people could do is go to Google or Yahoo or one of those, but Google I know I could pick it up on, and if you just type in USA Today, August 16th, 2012, and put in C, capital C, period, D, I, F, F, D, like dog, I, F, Frank, F, Frank, C, diff. And there, there will be a few articles come up. There's a, they have an entire list of the victims from that. Like something like 30,000 people die from this in the United States every year. Wow. Just from going in to have simple procedures. They, they had a story about an eight-month-old little baby that went in to have a simple procedure on a hole in her heart, which has gotten to be was rather common, and they ended up, the baby died because it got C. diff from the hospital. Wow. Yeah, that shouldn't happen. Well, yeah, it, uh, yeah and... It shouldn't happen. So, so if you, when you have people go in the hospital, maybe when you go to visit, maybe take a, a you know, a box of Clorox wipes and wipe off the telephones and wipe off the area around you, whoever you're visiting, it's just not a bad idea. That's what they say is what's wrong. Oh, believe me, uh, you know, having been a patient in the hospital and visiting people in the hospital, uh, the hospitals hospitals are one of the worst places you can be to catch things like MRSA and C. diff and uh, and, and other uh, the viruses that are, are not or you know and, and to the widespread abuse of antibiotics. You know. Well, when they're talking about forcing these and these workers to get flu injections for crying out loud, this is that this must have something to do with just profits and money that he's funneling. They're funneling out of this administration to cronies and friends to make more money, to, you know, through the government programs. And you know, if, if they just clean up the hospitals, thirty thousand people—they're like only thirty-five thousand die every year in traffic accidents for crying out loud. That's mm. a lot of people. Yeah. That's just from one bacteria. Mm. That's yeah. criminal. That's terrible. Yeah, yeah it is. And, and how anybody in this day and age could die from a steroid injection. I mean, look at how they make us jump through hoops to do anything. If you own a restaurant, God help you. You know, just, just keeping up with the standards. How dare they give us injections that have problems with them? I mean, this is wrong on so many levels. You know, we have so many things coming at us, but it, it, it's so long and we just let it go. I guess we leave it to the lawyers. Well, it, it, it's it's almost, it's, it's, you know, when you're in a duck or bleed scenario, I mean, you know, or you're, you're, you're playing whack-a-mole, you know, it, it's, it's difficult to really, <laughs> um, again, you know, yeah. this is why we have to discern or use our, our spiritual discernment to, to really, you know, sure. before before every show we, we look okay well what you know really what uh what is the most important uh bit of news out there and when and because we can go through the headlines it's important i mean i nearly lost two of my friends i mean they got so sick and, yeah. and in both cases neither time did they come up and tell them it was c diff in fact they never gave them a diagnosis and i mean they went from doctor to doctor you're talking about an expense plus they're sick hospital to hospital get out of the hospital go back in the hospital it was horrible Wow. Just have a missed time from work. I mean, over procedures that should just be, just, you know, they're just standard procedures. That's, you know? It, 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 what's wrong with that? You know, that's just, and, and that's, I mean, all I'm saying is, is that I think it's kind of important to spread the word so that people, there might be somebody out there who's got somebody that's sick after having surgery and they can't find out what's wrong with them. 
Well, okay, we're going to keep an eye out for this. And and I would urge everyone, you know, if you've got a loved one, even in nursing homes, especially in nursing homes uh, or assisted living centers too, you've got uh, numerous uh, accounts. I mean, I've seen numerous accounts of MRSA, the skin, you know, the various diseases uh, uh, that are antibiotic or resistant to antibiotics or, you know, it persists despite of antibiotics or even because of antibiotics. So, uh, but C. diff, well known. Well, USA Today to do that to do that article. I mean, why isn't that all over all of the newspapers? That was August sixteenth of twenty twelve, and if they just do a search on that, they'll get it. And there's just an entire list of all the victims, and it's just really sad. Okay, very good. Not all the victims, but a lot of them. So well, we're, we're going to touching. We're, we're going to put that. I won't, up. I won't keep any longer, guys. I, I always get on here, and I could go on forever because I just I love know. you to death. <laughs> Well, I love you too. Uh, one, one, one question though. I got to ask you this before we cut you loose. What's your mm-hmm. gut feeling? You know, I mean, we're we're kind of taking this poll. So if you're if you're in the queue, ready to come on, uh, and we're, I'm going to ask you this: What's your gut feeling between now and we'll say the end of the year? Uh, you see a quiet uh, progression through the end of the year, or you think something's going to take place, or? And what about Obama? I don't think Biden? Barack Obama's. I don't believe he'll ever walk away without tearing the country apart to do it. I, I just, I don't see it. He's, there's just, and that debate that he did, yeah. that almost, I'm not sure. I was glad and happy, and I watched it. I'm one of those people that I want to know what's going on with these people. And I watched it, and I mean, I was cheering it on because I thought it was great. And then afterwards, I thought, is it that he just doesn't care because he knows something's coming? <laughs> That's your first thing you think. I wanted yeah. to just be happy that he looks so bad. This guy has, hasn't done any work in four years. He's got so many czars in place that they do everything. He doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't even have to show up, you know. And so he doesn't know what's going on. But, you know, on drugs, I would guess. I, my first thought was that, I, that that he knows that it's in the bag. Something's coming, and it doesn't yeah. matter. And then my next thought was, no, I've also heard some rumblings, whether it goes anywhere, about um, big, huge news on violations for donations. Did you see that today? Yes, and, and this is kind of a replay of 2008. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, violations. That coming. won't go anywhere. I mean, what it was, you know. But I'm wondering if there's. Ins- I just keep thinking we're going to get somebody riding in on a white horse. Maybe there's more rumblings going on underneath that we don't know about, and that's why he was so off his game. So we could go another way. Interesting. You know? Well, hey, thanks. That's thanks. what I think. It could be go either way. Debbie, we got a full bank, bank of call, callers. I, God bless you. You go. Thanks. You go. Take care. God bless you guys too, and thanks a lot. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. God bless you. Bye-bye. Great to hear from you, Debbie. Yes. Yeah, oh, hold on, real quick. One more thing, real quick. If something would happen, are you guys planning on going on on having any type of um, radio? Um, what yes. do they call that? As long as short wave or you are? as long yes, as yeah, electric- short wave radio or anything. Yeah, uh, and a means to, but as long as we have uh, 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 capabilities, as long as the, you know, yeah, the tools are there to. There were a few, and Joe, I, I, and I'll tell everyone this: there were a few things that happened today that, that have changed or, or will change the complexion of, of certain things that will keep us on the air uh, should something happen. And uh, yes, okay, oh, okay, we, okay. We will, well, that was what I was thinking. We were talking about in the chat room the other day, and yeah. I thought I should ask you guys. We're going. We're, we're right okay. now in, in the initial stages of setting that up. So, uh, and, all and right, I, all right, up. guys. Not that you don't have enough to do. I'll bet you now you're taking one more hour a day, and I don't bet you still don't get any more done. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you 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 must be bugging our office here, our studio. Right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Thanks, Debbie. Thank you. <laughs> have a great night. All right, you guys. Yeah. God bless you. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Good night. All good right. Night. Well, let's. Yeah, we, we, we have, have uh, phones. Uh, about twenty people on hold right now. So uh, if we could kind of flash, and I think the light's pretty. Keep it a little short. Um, we would appreciate it, and we will try to get through as many, if not all, of these. We'll calls. just stay right on point. So go 814 ahead. Eight one four area code. You are on the air with the Hagman and Hagman report. Would that be me? That's you. That's me. This is Lori calling from Corey, or Columbus. Actually, I talked to uh-huh. you on the phone a couple weeks ago. You, yes, indeed. Um, have to respectfully disagree with the caller just before me. If you search really, really hard, you can find at least two or three days between vacations, golf, and campaigning that he's actually done some work. 
So, just, <laughs> so yeah. I, if you look really hard, I'm sure. No, 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 no worries. Is that a good thing that he's actually going to work or what? Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, there's pictures of him in the office, but, you know, I don't know. Uh, but then, you know, he's golfing, and I think there's another vacation coming up. Uh, but I am... Uh, I didn't actually watch the um, the thing on TV the other night, but I did have some follow up on it, and I was watching it. and I thought, okay, this can go two ways. He's either acting this way because he knows this isn't going to make any difference whatsoever; he's going to be elected, or he's been told by the elites that, "Honey, you're done. We're going with Romney." Ooh. I'm not sure which way yet. <laughs> um, don't know. So I thought that was kind of interesting, though, and I'm like, there's something something hinky going on here, but I'm not quite sure what the finger is there on that yet. Mm. Um, I'm not real sure. I, I really believe something is coming down in the next short while, um, but then again, I, I truly believe that the Christians are holding back a lot of this through prayer. Um, they're really hindering Satan through our prayers. And it, it's really frustrating them, and you can see it. Um, the global elites want this thing to happen, but they're very frustrated by us. Um, because we do pray. We do pray the blood of Christ, and and we keep him backtracking because we're hindering him. Um, yeah. Also, too, you had a caller the other night who called in about the Freemasons. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I left a message on your phone the other day, but I I thought, well, I better call in because this is such an important thing. And there are so many people in the church involved in the the Masonic Lodge, and they don't realize what they're involved in. And if you've ever heard of uh, Jeremiah Films, they have put out a whole bunch of uh, different programs on the Mormons and uh, gods of the New Age and things like that. They have one on Freemasons. And you can go to YouTube and just type in uh, Freemason from Darkness into Light. It's about 35 minutes long. And listen to the whole thing. This guy comes at it, you know, from a... He's not trying to necessarily nail anybody. But he's trying to get to the truth. And the... Many people in the church think they're involved in this great thing, and they're not. Um... Many of the the things, the oaths and stuff they have to take are the same oaths that are taken in witchcraft. And he goes through this. They talk to a mason and they talk to a a former person involved in in witchcraft and that. And they interview him and they say verbatim almost the same thing. You know, um, it's very important. uh, I got to tell you, I I received probably, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 emails with that title. Uh, from darkness uh, into the into light, uh, and I watched that. It was a fifty minute clip or fifty minute video. It's about thirty, about thirty five minutes or so. Okay. It's not real long. Right, and I'm going to tell you something. Uh, when I got done with that, uh, in fact, I, I bookmarked it because I wanted to watch. I need to watch it again because there was a lot of information in there. So I'd recommend that YouTube to everyone. Um, and, and you're right, the, the, the um, narrator, and I and I can't recall who it was. It wasn't really uh, aggressive, but just factual. But, you know, pretty pretty reserved, and said, "Look, dude, this is what's going on. Here's the findings." You know, and, and uh, so it was a, re- a refreshing approach to uh, a controversial topic. Well, most people don't realize what they're involved in, and yeah. you can't be divided like that. You can't give a blood oath to something else and still be a Christian and mm-hmm. serving Christ. You just can't. It's not possible. And that was the, the, another, another thing is the yoga. Many Christians are involved in yoga. Yes. And the positions of yoga are actually worshipful positions to another deity, to another god. Really? I've never heard that. And, and Lori, mm-hmm. let, let me tell you something. Okay, I, I've got uh, extreme like spinal stenosis and herniated discs, blown discs, and all kinds of stuff, sciatica. I mean, I'm like a mess. And my, my, the physical therapist says you need to probably do yoga. And, and let me tell you, if you had a video camera and uh, if you would watch me attempt to do yoga, that's not, none of that is natural. I, the, the human beings are not supposed to do that stuff. I look, you know, the positions and stuff. Uh, but you're right. There, 
there is a, an overlay to that uh, that is um, – uh, well, how did you describe that? Because uh, the, the all, the poses, all the poses that you go through in yoga are meant to align your, your spirit, your, your inner spirit with – with whatever deity is in the it's in the Middle East religions, whatever they are, I can't even think of them right now. But right. they also do a video on this. The gods of the New Age and that they go through all of this through the Jeremiah films. Okay. And just get on the Jeremiah films website and go through what they have because they have an amazing selection of videos on Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons and Seventh Day Adventists and and just the whole bit. I mean, beautiful, it's just amazing. What well, you know what, what what you're involved in. Well, Lori, I got to yeah. tell you something. When, when I'm out and uh, when I'm out your way, and Corey, uh, I'm going to stop and uh, uh, we'll have a cup of coffee together. How's that sound? <laughs> well, I don't drink coffee, but that would be great. Okay. So, well, yeah. Very good choice. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Lori. Thank you, and God have pleasure. a great evening. You too. Bye. You too. Good night. All right, here we go to area code. I don't do yoga. I really don't. Nine seven zero. You're live with the Hagman and the Hagman Report. Hang on a second. Let me call you back. Hello. Hey, yes, you're, you're live. Hello. Yes. Hi. Great. How are you? Good. What's up? Okay. For, first, real quick, I I did some looking on your website. I was trying to find that guy that talked about the birth certificate and becoming a real human, a live human thing at your courthouse. Remember that guy about a month ago that came on and was talking about you take your certificate of live birth? Oh, yeah, that was a caller, I believe, right? Yeah, uh, that was a yeah, caller. Yeah, he wasn't a guest, he was a caller, yeah. Yeah, um, and, and I'm still not clear exactly. I mean, I, I know kind of what he was referring to about court, yeah, but okay. Um, yeah, I don't know which show that was, uh, what episode that was, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, what's your take on that? Well, it you know it sounds sounds feasible. I mean, you know we're just a we're just an annex of you know England anyway, and you know they look at us as property and all that. So I was gonna I was gonna try it. You know I I found my birth certificate and I thought I'd give it a whirl, but I couldn't remember what day it was, and I sent Joe a, an email to his AOL, but I never got back. I know you guys are busy and everything, but. Uh, I was just wondering if if you guys had a link or if you had an idea of what show that might have been or an area of shows. I'll go back and listen. You know what I, we do, I don't I don't think Joe does, but I, I'll say this. I, I you know I just can't imagine you you being you, any person walking into the county clerk prothonotary or whatever they would call it. Uh, you know at your at your courthouse and to uh, try to emancipate yourself from. Uh, you know, uh, going through the process of some, some some sort of emancipation, I, I got a feeling that you know, um, I, I'd like to be there with a video camera when that happens. Not with you, you know. I'm not making fun of you. I'm just saying, seriously. I, I, I yeah. I, for I've been going into court county courthouses for 30 years, uh, doing on business, and and uh, man, that's a new one on me. Um, now I could yeah, be just because someone. Just because someone's never done it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. I mean, we have these, these people that have diplomatic privilege and whatever from other countries and all this. There could be these little clauses in there that we just don't know about. I mean, that's, oh, that's true. That's yeah. how the rich get by with their tax. That's how the really rich get by with all their tax breaks is whatever. They're paying somebody to know the special stuff that nobody else knows. Right. And now no, look, yeah, again, I'm not, uh, I'm not making fun of or not, you know, d- discounting that. It's just that I just don't know how that would work. I, I really don't know how that would work. And I'd be interested to find out more. And, and what benefit though, caller, would that give uh, a person and, and uh, refresh my memory on that? Uh, um, it was about, it was about taxes and owning your property and owning your house and only having to pay like, uh, instead of, property tax or something you pay an incise tax or something it was something about changing it It was a smaller amount and then releasing your properties and stuff and, okay uh, you know i so okay yeah you know what um and we apologize for not getting back with you on this uh via email but i honestly i don't i i couldn't tell you in fact i'm not even certain that uh, i would say it's about it was 
uh, at least two weeks ago. But but was there any type of really information of value uh, in terms of the process and procedure which you needed to do the step by step thing? I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, he did get into that okay. a little bit. Okay. Um, that's I, something we'd have to, you know. I, well, I wish I could help you, and we do try to keep track of the show content quite quite well. But that, um, you know, yeah, if we do come across that episode or when that was, we will. I will make sure to. Yeah, you've got his record of his email. I'm sure. Yeah, you just haven't found it. But yeah, yeah. call or anything else before we cut you loose. Um, yes, just uh, two quick things. Here in Western Colorado, they were giving the flu shots free to vets. Imagine that. Oh, uh, that's great. Yeah, and then uh, um, I wanted to talk to, to talk to Joe about his wife um, not believing in the current situation and stuff. That you know, like uh, like that one caller called in, that that guy that calls in all the time. I can't remember his name. It's yeah, not what? a salvation issue. No, I, but yeah, if, they don't, if they don't buy in, go ahead. It, it was. It's not that she doesn't believe uh, in it. it. It's just uh, there's no interest um, to learn, and uh, we're working. You know, on that, it's not a salvation issue. I'm not worried about her, but it's just difficult um, for me to be so uh, into the Bible and into current events, uh, and those aren't the same interests uh, as she shares. Um, uh, as we're, you know, yeah, growing yeah. together, uh, it's just um, an uh, issue. It's not even a, a really a problem. Well, um I just got divorced last year, and that was one of the things that my ex, she didn't want to follow. She didn't want to hear it. She was, you know, wanted to put her head in the sand. And, you know, and I also have a friend at work, and he's like, so what can you do about it? You can't stop it. You can't change it. You know, just believe in God, and he'll take care of you. Well, I, I try to do that, but we're also to be prepared and to know and to, you know, to to see the signs of the times and all that. That's, you know, you're exactly so, right. Yep. And and then one more thing. In that divorce, it got brought up because years ago when my children, they're 14 and 16 now, and they were like four or five years old when they were young, we were coming back from somewhere and there was someone hitchhiking. And I said, and we were, we were talking about picking up hitchhikers and, oh, would you ever pick up? No, and this and that. And we were talking about, uh, you know, faith also. And I I told my kids and my wife that, you know, if, if something ever happened and they put a gun to my head and said, you know, you renounce Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or we're going to shoot you. And I said, well, I, I tell my kids, I'm sorry. I'll see you on the other side. I love you, but I cannot do that. And then it, so they asked some questions and my, my ex asked a question. And I said, I said, if they did the same thing to one of my children, I'm sorry. I can't do that. If they put a gun to your head, I'm sorry. You're under grace. You're under 13. You know, I love you. I will see you on the other side. I'm sorry, but I cannot renounce Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And that was a very hard conversation. But then, here it is, 10, 15 years later, we go to get divorced, and, and she's supposedly a Christian, and she used that against me in court, that I said that about my kids. So, no, you know, I'm not trying to be a martyr in major per persecution, but when it comes, when the when the poop hits the, the air slinger, mm -hmm. you know, things like that are going to happen and people are going to have to stand up and, and, and say, they will not renounce. You know, it's one thing if they're pointing a gun at you and it's just you, or right. if it's the other way, they're pointing to family members. Well, uh, you know, to me, there, there's a lot of, of real estate between now, or there's a lot of real estate to get to that point. Uh, look, I'm not, you know, I, boy, I just can't imagine, well, I can't imagine, but I just, I would not be a, a very good uh, hostage, I suppose is the word in that case, okay? Um, I'm not even sure they'd be able to get that question out. Uh, and I, and I, that, that's not bravado on my point. That's just, you know, I... I don't know, but uh, yeah, you know, caller. I, I think we are going to have to make a decision at some point. We are going to be forced to say, "Renounce," you know, "I, I renounce Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior," or die. And, and at that point, you know, uh, look, you know, you're going. Uh, I can see. Well, that. I know where I'm going. I'm not worried about it. It's just, it's tough. And and you know, people say, 
you know, oh, oh, you can have my gun when you peel it from my cold dead hand. How many, how many cold dead hands did they peel out guns Ex- out of down in Louisiana? Hurricane exactly, day? exactly, exactly. That see, you know, they, they punched it, they, they kicked in doors, beat up a few old ladies, but people coughed them up. Yes, 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 exactly. You're exactly yeah. right. Hey, Carl, yeah. if you want to, um, think- if you want to resend me an email. Uh, just to make sure I'll have it right at the top of my email for today. I got information, the information you were looking for, and it's too much here to read on there. Um, and just, just go to homelandsecurityus.com, click on his name on any on the last article, and uh, that'll open up an email box and, and just uh, say attention, Joe, and uh, he'll send this to you. Okay. All right. God bless you, my friend. We we got to move on, and uh, we thank you for your call. And okay. uh, man, I'll tell you, great stuff. Take care. And, and oh, I think I got him off. He's continuing. Oh shoot! I'm sorry about that. And I think this is Lucy uh, calling back. Lucy. Yeah. When we dropped her. Hey, Lucy. Is that you? Hi, Lucy. Yes, I got. You I got, got thrown. Uh, I've gotten thrown off of that four times. It's not us doing it. Thank uh, you for your patience. It's not us. I I know, I know, but uh, oh, I had so much to say, and now I'm blank. But the uh, the dreams from my uh, real father, that DVD that the man was talking about. Obama has gone and edited his video of dreams from my father in taking out all references to Frank Marshall Davis. And he had 22 references in there. Uh, Yep, I didn't know that. And he was known only by Frank, by the first name, and he's omitted the references. Well, wow. Yes, so he's taken that out. Yep, yep. Which, and is, I didn't hear any of y'all's comment uh, about my question, but I will go and listen. But I am real burdened right now about Ulcerman Man on uh, Facebook and yeah. about your uh, man that gives you the contact information. And I was just wondering if it would be all right if I prayed. Yes, yes, indeed. And if I get cut off, I'll just get cut off. Dear Lord, we come to you in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ. And, Father, it's just the shed blood of Christ that holds us together, and that's how we have unity. Oh, Father, I thank you for the willingness of the Ulcerman man and uh, Joe and Doug's men who have been so faithful to relay messages, Lord, and I've noticed the clamp down uh, on all on so many uh, imp- websites with information, Lord. There's, there's no talk. God, we ask that you would protect these men or that are trying to stand up and do what they can. Lord, we ask that your angels would just around Joe and Doug and their families and that no harm would come to them, Father. We plead the blood of Jesus on them. We ask that your angels would go before them and surround them and watch over them, Lord. Watch over their coming in and their going out from this day forth and forevermore. And I just pray a blessing on them, Lord. And, Lord, our hope is only in you. It's not in any, anything else. It's in you, Jesus Christ, the King. And we love you, and I, I thank you for the privilege of holding these men up. We hold them up to you, Lord. We all join our arms and hold them up. And, Lord, we'll give them peace about, uh, as you say in James, if we lack wisdom to ask, and you'll give it. So I know that you're going to get the articles out that you want Joe and Doug to to produce. And I just order their schedule because their time is in your hands, just as Psalm 30 says. Lord, we just praise your holy name. We praise you, Lord, for you inhabit the praises of your people. And Lord, uh, I just thank you. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, thank you. Amen. 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 
Well, and, I'll, I'll tell you, you just you know, don't know how, how much we appreciate that. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, give all the glory to the Lord. And I got to say, um, you know, I'm just so proud that we have a show that, you know, people can you pray. Come on and pray. Yes. yes. It's just, uh, I, I feel so blessed to be a part of it. Uh, and uh, I so appreciate uh, your calling in and, and, and praying on air with us. It is uh, so touching. Uh I just wish I could explain it. <laughs> uh, it's a true. It is a true blessing, uh, and we just thank you so much, yeah. Lucy. I have to oh, say, thank you. I, I would just want to say this. I I know that uh, my my source appreciates and and welcomes and and needs that uh, spiritual armor and that prayer from everyone. And thank you so much for putting that into into action. Yes. Yeah. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Okay. God bless you. Thank Liz. you. Yeah, I'll tell you. Bye. Bye-bye. Good night. That's Good powerful, night. isn't it? Yes, it is. Very and, powerful. And I just want to, I just, if I may, at this point, and, and, and Lucy, thank you. Um, I just want to just say, Isaiah chapter 62, verse, um, verse 6, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. And I think that's our charge for this program and others' charge as well. Yeah. Um, And with that, uh, we're going to go to the phones. Uh, We've got about four minutes before the top of the So many callers uh, uh, that have been patiently waiting for some up to an hour. Uh, God bless you guys. Area code 413. You are on air with the Hagman and Hagman Report after about an hour wait, and we are sorry about that. That's okay, guys. Amen, Lucy. Amen, Doug. You guys are doing great. I have a little bit of, I don't know what kind of information you want to call it, but just something that happened today over here. This is Doreen in Massachusetts. Okay. And I was around 2.30 this afternoon, just coming out of a convenience store, and there was a black Land Rover parked with engine running and a a very clean-cut, well-dressed man standing in the door of the car with a massive binoculars. And he was very intensely focused from south to north for probably three or four minutes. He definitely was scoping something uh, the whole time, very intensely. And I, I sat and waited for just a minute to maybe ask him what he was seeing. And there was an opportunity at the very end, he was getting ready to to sit down in his in his car and maybe drive off, but I could tell he was very concerned. And I asked him, "What did you see in those binoculars?" And he said, "It was a North Korean jet." And I don't even know if this this type of jet exists because he rattled off a lot of information all at once. Is there such a thing as an F? 138 or a C138 or 135? Uh, C1. I, I, C, I don't know. Wait, 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 I think uh, uh, before C130. But, 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 wait, 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 wait a second, Doreen. This guy told you that he was watching through his binoculars a Korean yes. North Korean. Did you, did you say North Korean? North Korean. North Korean jet. Oh, over a Which America? Would have been coming by way of. It would have been coming by way of the pathway of New York City up to Maine. Right, uh, right along that that uh, ninety or uh, the North that Way corridor. Right, right, right. right. Uh, and that was about two thirty this afternoon. A clear blue sky, and it it must have been flying so high I couldn't hear anything. I mean, I was looking how, up there trying the to we, find out what he was. How, how would he know where to look if you couldn't see? You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, well, that's the thing that's so, I mean, this man looked like a vet. He looked like, he looked like an 
airplane guy. I can't explain it. No, I, I understand. Can't, I can't even explain it. Yeah. I mean, he looked like he had a leather, a black leatherish looking jacket. He was very official looking. His car was black. Like I said, it was a Rover. Um, don't know, Doug. Don't know any more than what I'm telling you. I didn't ask any more. Oh. Um, I made a silly little comment like, you didn't see any drones up there, did you? Laughed and drove off, you know, because, it, you know, um, it was a very uncomfortable moment that I even broke through to this guy who, it almost looked like he was on official business. Uh -huh. Well, that's a crazy I'm, I'm just, I, and Wow. I, Wow. Yeah, I mean, I'm just giving the information. It's funny that you just quoted from Isaiah 62 that about watching, and you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna stop. We're not gonna stop being the watchers, right? No, so, we have to. I, I for mean, whatever it's worth, I had to pass it along to you. Holy cow, Doreen! Look, you know what? Well, this could be nothing. Well, it could yeah. be nothing. But to me, I'm very intuitive. And that man was out of place. Well, see, uh, he was out know, of place. Well, it, it could be, uh, you know, the guy could have gave you the wrong. Uh, if he says North Korea, or he's watching for a North Korean. No, plane. you know what? So, he, so, been, he looked you know. concerned. He looked concerned. Yeah. In he, him, in himself, you know, he. I could tell he was visibly concerned. Okay. Wow. But I also thought. I, intuitively, I felt like it wasn't surprising to him, but that he was concerned. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah. Well, I it, mean, he was obviously there looking, so he must have known or thought something or been told. I don't know. I don't know. Well, Dor Doreen... I, I'm just asking information. Well, yeah, I'm glad you did, because and, and what Joe and I do is we've got a... Uh, uh, um, um, a box uh, that that's like an inbox, and we keep all of it. we have what we call incident reports, where like years now uh, that that you've given us uh, day, date, time, location, right. and 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 you were that specific. Right. We will have an incident report right. on this. Okay, and and we yeah. we do we do share this information with Steve Quayle, Greg Greg Evenson, and others, so they can yeah. put yeah. it. You know, and we've done this sure. before. That's the way to do it. So, and if it amounts to nothing, it amounts to nothing. But this man definitely, I mean, he was very watchful. He was intensely focused, and he was his binoculars headed from very far to his south. And straight over to north until he couldn't. Obviously, he put his binoculars down when he couldn't see them anymore. Wow. Okay. Well, that's rather disturbing. I, I, I will make some inquiries. I know you've got some people that you can contact as well. Yeah, that's Joe, uh, I pointed to Joe. Um, but uh, Doreen, thank you for that. Uh, okay, guys. Odd. Man. Anything else before we cut yeah, to this? Yeah, and you know, if you hear anything, then then definitely let us listeners know, because oh, I'm we'll just a little peon who was, you know, in the parking lot looking at this man. Hey, hey look, uh, we're peons too, and but man, I'll tell you, th thanks for asking that question to to that man, and uh, thanks for reporting it to us. And folks, you heard it, you heard it here first, I think. Um, yeah, that's no problem, guys. Have a good hey, night. Good God bless you. Good night. Uh, we're up against the top of the hour break. Ladies God and gentlemen, bless you guys. All right. You're listening to Doug and Joe Hagman on the Hagman and Hagman Report on this, the fifth day of October, October. 2012. This is a Friday show. Uh, we're just finishing hour number two, heading into hour number three. Before we break, I want to tell you, uh, folks, if you, have a, if you haven't already done this, go to HomelandSecurityUS.com. HomelandSecurityUS.com. Click in the upper right-hand corner, Mind Regard. It's a nootropic mind power, nootropic mind power. It's a, it's a dietary supplement. You want cognitive enhancement? You got it with nootropic mind power. I've got to tell you, this stuff works. Um, I do not promote, endorse, uh, or even talk about it on our program anything I don't believe in. This is indeed one product I believe in. Ever since I've been taking this, I've been a little bit more sharp around the edges and I need that especially when you're 
you know, uh, uh, pulling a pretty grueling schedule. So, folks, do me a favor. Uh, go to mindregard.com and check them out. Tell them Doug and Joe sent you. And I guarantee you, yeah, once you start taking these, you're going to know, too, when you stop. You're going to feel it all of a sudden. It's going to be like, because I missed a couple of days. Oh, nah, I'll tell you what. Mindregard.com. We'll be right back, folks, with hour number three, taking your phone calls. We'll try to get the rest of the calls on hold. And we and appreciate the rest of the news. Yeah. God bless. Stay with us. Hang in there. Hi, folks. Doug Hagman here. You might know me as the co-host from the Hagman and Hagman Report or as a frequent guest on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. If you're like me, you're tired and confused over today's headlines. You just don't know where to turn for accurate, concise information about really what's going on, what's truly going on in today's society. If you don't know where to turn for accurate, well-researched, and properly vetted news, I've got a suggestion. In fact, it's a requirement. Bookmark Canada Free Press. That's CanadaFreePress.com on the Internet. It's just not for Canada. It's for news across the world. Judy McLeod, founding editor, has put together a vast array of talented writers like Kelly O'Connell, Daniel Greenfield, Dr. Eileen johnson Powell, a lot of guest columnists, very talented writers. Folks, that's Canada Free Press at CanadaFreePress.com. Now mobile-friendly. Follow on Facebook, because without America, there is no free world. Survival of the fittest. In any and all situations, survival is your number one priority. That requires being tough and thinking smart. And the folks at Freeze Dry Guy are going to help you do just that. They have a long-range patrol ration entrees, what they call the Brick Pack. When you're in survival mode, it is absolutely the best item for your survival pack or bug-out bag. You can go farther, faster, and carry more food with the LRP cold weather ration entrees. Not only do these long-lasting, durable entrees help sustain you or your family through the harshest environment or situation, they are by far the most delicious of their kind. No contest. With a variety of tasting entrees, you can't beat the LRP Brick Packs. Let Freeze Dry Guy help you in your survival situations. Go to freezedryguy.com. That's freezedryguy.com. Or call 866-404-3663. That's 866-404-FOOD. Hold on to your seat. The Hagman and Hagman flight is now taking off. Doug and Joe Hagman have cleared the runway of TSA agents, jihadists, political crackpots, and global elitists. Now get ready for some real news. Here they are, Doug and Joe Hagman. And welcome back to hour number three on this Friday, October 5th edition of the Hagman and Hagman Report. First two hours flew by so fast, and uh, thank you for your patience. Callers on hold, we are coming to you in a second. First, I want to hit on this news story. Drone strike in Yemen kills five. The Associated Press is quoting a Yemeni security official's reports that a drone believed to be American uh, fired missiles at two cars late Thursday morning, October 4th in Yemen. The officials quoted the AP story report that at least five people were killed uh, in one of the two cars targeted by the drone. Other accounts uh, say four people. Uh, either way, the reports come out uh, that the military, the missile strike killed militants, members of a group uh, of NR al-Sharia. And this is uh, where this article gets interesting because they start to bring up the question of militant. And it says, this pretext for the killing bring up the question, when did militancy become a crime? If it is a crime, moreover, where is it defined? How can anyone know if someone is guilty of militancy if such a crime is not defined? Could one hypothetically be a militant without knowing it, given that the crime is nowhere defined? Furthermore, is the suspicion that one is associated with a group believed to be capable of planning attacks on American allies sufficient justification for the immediate execution of that person. Um, and it goes on to talk about, you know, 
the injustice and the uh, craziness of these drone strikes. And um, I have reports on the numbers. Uh, there was a study done as uh, by the – let me pull this up here. There was a, a study conducted on drone strikes and by a college and in just in Pakistan alone, the uh, people who have been killed and they've been killed by the thousands. Here it is. Drone strikes kill, maim, and traumatize too many civilians, a U.S. study says. U.S. drone strikes in Pakistan have killed far more people than the U.S. has acknowledged have traumatized innocent residents and largely been ineffective, according to a new study released Tuesday. Uh, the study by Stanford Law School and New York University's uh, School of Law for Reevaluation of the Practice, saying the number of high-level targets killed as a percentage of total casualties is about 2%. About 2%. So, so uh, <laughs> something to be proud of? This is it's insane. Uh, the report accuses Washington of misrepresenting drone strikes as a surgically precise and effective tool that makes the U.S. safer, saying that in reality there is significant evidence that U.S. drone strikes have injured and killed civilians. Uh, this cast doubts on Washington's claims that drone strikes produce zero to few civilian casualties and alleges that the U.S. makes efforts to shield the drone program from uh, democratic accountability. Uh, what's the most important here are two things. One, Obama has authorized 283 uh, drone strikes in Pakistan, and uh, this is six times more than the number during George Bush's eight years in office. Um, and the estimated deaths are anywhere from 1,500 to 2,600 uh, people during that time period. And uh, what is very disturbing is that based on interviews with witnesses, victims, and experts, the reports accuse the CIA of double striking. We talked about this before, a, a tactic of Al-Qaeda, striking once, killing the intended target, and then coming back and striking the first responders and the rescue workers who are there to help the people who are hurt. This practice of double striking a, tar a target, moments at targeting Moments after the initial hit, thereby killing first responders, it also har highlights harm beyond death and physical inj injury and uh, should be, you know, a crime, and people should be arrested over this. Well, but there, was a bit, there was a big, uh, really, outcry with uh, Bush doing this. And again, I don't want to get into partisan politics, but th there's the consistency I mean, I don't care we have to does. talk about. Torture, absolutely illegal, treasonous. Uh, drone strikes, well, kill with... Crimes. I mean, it's what? war crimes. I, torture? Uh, torture is, is a war crime. Yeah. Yeah. Punish for them. I mean, it's treason. But, but it's okay. a war crime. Well, well, yeah, that's fine. But, you know, uh, uh, this kind of segues into... Uh, but, but what's not fine is that we have uh, not only the whole unrest in the Middle East situation, the rumors of war with Russia and all the stuff going on there, the economic instability across the globe, well, we'll get we'll get this, Joe. And, and ladies we, and gentlemen, wait, wait a second, wait, wait. Look, hey, have you look? Uh, you, yeah, this, yeah. Okay, this dovetails right into this, right, folks. I don't know whether you heard about this or not. And, and okay, talk about a dot. Talk about a dot. And, and folks, by the way, if you want to watch us for whatever reason that is, just to look at our shiny faces and my really cool tie. Uh, it's Homeland Security US, the number one dot TK. We're so proud to be a part of the Christians United Broadcasting Network. I know that was kind of like a, where did that come from? But anyway, Homeland Security U.S., uh, the number one dot TK. You can watch us live during our program. And also, through the Christians United Broadcasting Network, they have the archives of previous shows. Uh, but, but, but go on. But just on. the last point I want to make here, they say um, this, uh, uh, the drone strikes in Pakistan, for every 49 people that are killed, yep. uh, one of them is a suspected uh, militant, right, or a terrorist, or yeah. whatever. Right, exactly. But but but, he, but here's a thought, folks. And I don't know whether you heard the, about this or if you've done any research, because we Joe Joe found this, and we researched the heck out of this uh, for a couple of hours over the last couple of days. 
And Trace, tra- what we tried to do was we found the we found the headline and, and then we found the article and articles about this multiple, and then we tried to trace it back to um, the motive for this. But HR six five six six, that's House Resolution sixty five sixty six. This is an amendment of the Homeland Security Act of twenty twelve or twenty o two two thousand and two to require the administrator of FEMA to provide guidance and coordination for, now, you ready for this? <laughs> Mass fatality planning and for other purposes. H.R. 6566 passed on, uh, or introduced on September 28th, just a mere week ago, addresses guidance and coordination for mass fatality planning and for other purposes. The bill is only three pages long. Yeah, noting the necessity for emergency preparedness in relation to terror attacks, natural disasters, man-made disasters, the bill instructs FEMA to be sensitive to the fact that Jews and Muslims require bodies to be buried within 48 hours of death. Okay, now I did interview uh, a, a funeral director that I know. As a matter of fact, this funeral director, a friend of mine, his wife was kidnapped and murdered uh, uh, about 28 years ago. Uh, let's see, no, not quite that long ago, 23 years ago. And, uh, in fact, we had vacation together, and uh, a good friend of mine, and it was just a sad situation. Um, at the time, he was a bank manager, and, and they, they kidnapped, the husband and wife kidnapped his wife and uh, executed her. And it was a very sad, sad, sad situation. But anyway, he had... Uh, uh, after that, he had uh, uh, resigned from being a bank manager and then gone to, into the funeral home business. But that said, I interviewed this gentleman, and um, I asked him, I said, uh, Harry, what, what, what's the deal on this HR 6566? Well, he said, well, I, I, you know, I'm clueless. What, what do you mean? And, and I explained to him about the bill, and he said, uh, wow, this, uh, you know, I'm going to have to look into it. Well, uh, this apparently is a mandate for funeral homes cemetery, and cemeteries and uh, other mortuaries, if you will, um, to m- ensure that the bodies are prepared. Bodies, victims of mass casualties, of casualty events, are prepared in accordance with the religious uh, religious uh, doctrine. Yeah, preparedness for mass fatalities and carrying out the section. The administrator shall provide guidance and or to and coordinate with appropriate individuals, including representatives from different communities private sector businesses, nonprofit organizations, and religious groups and organizations to prepare for and respond to a natural disaster, act of terrorism uh, that results or, in mass or fatality. Other, or other man-made disaster. Yes. Or other, so I, I did ask him, I said, have you, you know, what's the deal? Are we, you know, on this? And he said, look, I've never seen this before. And he's been doing this for 15, let's see, no, almost 18 years now. Um, so uh, this this took him by surprise because there there are uh, guidelines in place already. Now it, they don't. However, the guidelines that are in place do not address the mass casualty events. So that's the key sentence right there. The key statement: mass casualty events. So, folks, what are they? What are they planning? Is is this not a dot? And this is a bill that was introduced by. Mr. Richardson of the House of Representatives to the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure. So, uh, I got to tell you, this does not give me the warm fuzzies to think about this. No, and as this uh, uh, Paul Joseph Watson article from InfoWars points out, FEMA, as you may recall, is the same organization that couldn't get bottles of water delivered to New Orleans Victims right. of Hurricane Katrina, you know, within four to five days, and held up hundreds of seasoned volunteer emergency service workers from entering the city for several days. Uh, they also cut the communication lines for the local sheriff and police departments. Uh, FEMA did, so the police couldn't even connect. Yeah, with and, each and other. You've got to ask yourself, what's the motivation there? Yeah, seriously. Are while you- they're buying caskets, while they're buying. 1.4 billion bullets while they're buying guns now, uh, assault rifles. Um, you know, we see what they have done in the past. We see what the Department of Homeland Security, that uh, Fusion Center PDF, that explains right. that the Homeland Security is basically worthless and it is just nothing but a uh, device used to condition us 
by encroaching on our civil rights, by destroying our civil freedoms uh, as uh, individuals, uh, citizens of America, born in, in this constitutional republic, we have a right to the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and those are all being stripped away at an incredible rate by these uh, tyrannical, oppressive agencies of the government. Let's Indeed. take it. Let's go to international caller. International caller, you're on with Dr. Joe Hagman. Oh, good morning, uh, Mr. Hagman. I am Constance from France. Uh, Oh, our favorite uh, overseas correspondent. Uh, uh, we, we, you know, we have drafted you as, as our French correspondent. Somebody was asking about you. Uh, oh, not at all, not at all. Well, what I want to to say tonight, um, I want to 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 go back because I'm going to to link this up. Uh, this is my idea. Uh, I want to first talk about uh, Christine Lagarde. Now, Christine Lagarde. Her political she, her career began, do you know where? In Chicago. Her career, she was working for the, the law firm Baker and McKinsey in 1981. And that's where her career took off. Yep. And I want to say also, you know who also uh, Christine Lagarde was, is, was working with? She was working with Ms., Mr. Brzezinski. That I and didn't know. Miss, yes, and you know a lot of people worked with Mr. Brzezinski uh, on certain things, but the project in particular that she was working on, she was in charge of the USA Poland defense industry, working for a contract uh, for the, the Lockheed Martin uh, uh, military uh, weapons, uh, assault mil- uh, weapons, and you know which country she was uh, um, negotiating these contracts? She was negotiating them uh, for into Poland with uh, with Mr. Brzezinski. And thanks to Christine Lagarde, in the, I think it was in 2002, they saw 3.5 billion uh, Lockheed Martin jet fighters to Poland. No, isn't that very strange that a small, poor Eastern European country like Poland gets money to buy these fighter jets? So where does the money come from? Ah, the money comes from, they were using the money from the European uh, Union Fund for the preservation of the agriculture to buy these weapons. All right? Now, Whoa, after okay. Poland buys these weapons, what does Poland do with these weapons? Because I don't think Poland is, needs all of these jet fighters or to defend herself. I don't know. Would she be able to defend herself? But, uh, you know, the transaction, uh, the, all these jet fighters, they ended up being uh, incorporated, sold, resold, in Iraq, uh, in in other countries in the Middle East. Wow. So, you know, oh, yes. So, you know, it was, uh, Poland was used as a, how do you say, uh, uh, like an agent to give weapons, to send these weapons, you know, and it is not, uh, and she's Bilderberg, everybody knows that she's Bilderberg, also, so you know, um, the, the, and the prime, she was uh, giving the prime contractors in Iraq uh, and Afghanistan, and you know, and this was all part of Poland's defense modernization, and they never got it. They, they sent it overseas, you know. And, Constance, and then was, again, Constance, yes? was when was when did this take place? Did you know oh, about? This was back in two. Th- Yes, this was back in 2002 that they were doing this. Uh, oh, yes, and you know, and people have forgotten all of this because, you know, when you read about her biography, they forget these little details of how she was working in Washington also, how she was doing internships in Washington, and how she was, uh, her friend Brzezinski, what she was doing with Brzezinski, because at one time there was at a commission, she was working on a commission, she was for the expansion of the Euro Atlantic community and the World Trade Organization 
and she was work you know with with with, in, with uh, investments for Poland, Latvia, Romania, to Czech Republic and Hungary. And this I'm going to tell you, I think this ties directly in to to Charles Khan. Now if you remember back in two thousand and nine, uh, two thousand ten Mr. Solskjaer, he had a problem, and you know he was in New York. He was arrested in New York, and uh, actually that was uh, he's another Bilderberger, but he was a Bilderberger that they took down. And the problem is, he was framed. Uh, that was quite evident that he was framed. Apart that, okay, his philandering. Oh, yes, because at the same time that he was arrested, he was director of the IMF here in Europe, but he was also uh, considering possibility to run against, at that time, uh, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy. And uh, he, but, but with the decision, he said it would be decided later on, uh, after the summer, that would be the, the coming September after the vacation. But what happened in the middle? In the meantime, he was arrested. He, and that was why was he re, was arrested? And at the same time, uh, after he was arrested, uh, very quickly, very quickly, they moved Christine Lagarde in his place. And even we had Geithner telling how wonderful it was having Christine Lagarde in place because everybody knows that Christine Lagarde is pro-American and pro-military defense. But I want to, that is not uh, the most important thing because when he was, uh, uh, Stoskan was arrested here in, in Europe, we have, uh, in the, the European Times, it was said that the reason why Soskan was taken down is because he wanted to torpedo the dollar, and and they mentioned Fort Knox, the gold. How is really gold in Fort Knox? They don't believe America has any more gold. So that well, is a problem. Countries who has gold, who doesn't have gold. And, you know, uh, that is a problem because, you know, we don't know how much gold these governments are having except when they put it on the table or, or like England, we, they say they have it. They say it is in the underground uh, vault. We right. never seen it. Uh, uh, Fort Knox, do we really know what is in Fort Knox? Uh, why was uh, Stotscon taken down? And they're still giving him problems because there's a possibility that maybe he can come back to politics. But, you know, I don't think it, it is a moral point of philandering. I see he was, he was Bilderberg, and he was taken down by the Bilderberg group. And there were very, very, uh, I think, uh, important reasons why he was taken down and uh, Career and Christine Lagarde. It was a, a railroaded right in to take its place very, very quickly. Wow. Well, you know, uh, you, uh, Constance, you mentioned one thing, and, and that was about uh, you. You covered a lot of the ground, by the way. But the the one thing that you mentioned was about gold in Fort Knox. Your country, uh, your your country now, France. Um, when um, uh, your prime minister uh, uh, back in 1971. He was. He, he did not believe that we had the gold in Fort Knox or elsewhere. That's right. You remember when he asked for the money and the yeah. Amer the gold, and the America did not give the gold back to him. <laughs> you know, they were, France was not very happy about that. That's right. So you know, all these countries. And now we have on the market all of this false gold uh, coming out in different countries. Where is it coming from? You know, it is very, very, uh, uh, and you know, uh, who has gold and who doesn't. It is a game of blind man's bluff, I think, that they are playing at these countries because uh, uh, physical gold, we don't know who have it, and now they are putting in place, you know. the. I don't know who has it, and I can't even imagine who doesn't have it, but, uh, you mm. know, I think that is a very uh, important thing to consider in the future, about about the, the gold bullion, if if indeed there is any in Fort Knox. Yeah, I, I'd like to see an audit of that. I personally have my doubts, especially after uh, the 1971 
um, you know, taking get, getting taken off the the Bretton Woods uh, system, the, the gold back system, because it'd be for the very reason that you you know uh, your prime minister of France said, hey, we want to be paid in gold, and, and Nixon said, no, no, no. So you know that of course, and, and Nixon at the time uh, was in tight with Brzezinski. Brzezinski was in tight with Nixon, and of course, uh, even back then, I mean, th- th- this guy is kind of a dinosaur. And you're right that the connection yes, between- these people they, and you know all of the names in all of these games, all of the same names, they always come up and up and for example here in Europe and I want to, to make this this point also that things that are happening in America are connected with the things that are happening here in Europe. They are not isolated incidences the because the same people who are controlling the strings here in Europe they are controlling the strings in America. So it is not uh, separate circumstances because as nations, we have uh, uh, Spain, we have Portugal, we have Ireland, we have countries that are really, really on the verge, I think, of civil war almost. Uh, the people are hungry. We have mass, mass, mass uh, uh, refugees coming out of North Africa. Uh, and flooding into Europe. We have uh, refugees coming, not refugees, but people coming from uh, Italy. Uh, We come from Spain, uh, from Greece. They are being flooded now into all the European countries, and this is being done on purpose. This is like you have the problem with the border with Mexico. We are now being flooded here in Europe with all of these people, and it's becoming, and we don't have means even to take care of our own people. Uh, and you know, France is, 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 is not so stable also, and it is being done on purpose. And nobody is telling us, nobody is saying anything to us about prepare what is coming, uh, make preparations with food, because food is a big problem in, in Spain right now. Uh, you see people eating out of the garbage cans, and the government want to put, uh, put uh, the locks on the garbage can to keep the people out from eating the food. This is, uh, you, where do you hear things like this? This is Europe. What is being done to us? And these people is the same people that is happening in America. And you know when it happened, and the thing about it is I think if we had guns in Spain, if they had guns in Spain and in, 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 and in, in Greece, they would use them because every day the bloodbath and the fights that they're having and burning in these countries it is really Europe is crumbling. It is crumbling. And the same thing, it is happening in America. So it's not separate. And I think that we people in Europe, we should unite with the Americans because it is in our interest to get these, fight these people together. Because if you notice, they have taken down these countries one by one. First they went into Greece, then they went into Ireland and all these other countries, and they are, they are taking us down one by one, and the people are oblivious. They don't realize what is happening, and it's going to be too late when they wake up, and I think that's why right now we should reach out to our American counterparts and join in the fight to get these people uh, off of our backs, because then afterwards, if we do win the fight, which I don't know, which I really doubt, because we are so far down there with this rabbit hole, I think we're going to have to really deal with all of these people from high, from the White House, from the European Parliament, from everybody. We are going to have to really deal with these people. Now, oh, Constance, let me ask so you. <laughs> uh, look, uh, you're on fire tonight, and thank you. And I, I love it. Yeah, you got fans uh, in the uh, chat room yeah, uh, now, here. But but you said no, me- because I am angry. What they are hitting us with, like like in America, they are hitting us over here with everything. Also, we are being hit with with, uh, with taxes. We are being hit with unemployment. We are being hit with vaccines. We are being hit with chemtrails. We are being hit with new European laws because Borozo, uh, I think last week, he wants to make it a crime now uh, for, uh, to, to tell people that they are terrorists if you speak out against against Euro, uh, against the European Union, uh, 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 the countries losing their sovereignty. I think these people... 
are getting bold and above themselves. And I think it's about time that we stand together and take these bastards down. And I'm, because if we don't, it's going to be too late. Europe is on fire here, and we are just sitting around and waiting for Christmas, you know? What is this? It is insanity. Oh. Well, you sent me an email, Constance. I, 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 I printed it out. You're hearing whispers, it, it, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I take it you're hearing whisper, whispers about gulags over in Europe. I, I, am I right on that? Yes, because they were saying something. I never paid attention to it back in 2006. They were talking about, you know, prisons and gulags and whoever knew what they were talking about, you know. But then now, you know, what are they going to do, start doing with and all of this military build up in Germany now? Uh, uh, and all these new laws that are being uh, put into place, and there are more and more FEMA. I'm looking at all these new things that are coming out about FEMA. How are they planning to deal with us? They, I looked at the old map about all the old gulags and prison camps, and they was all over Europe. They was in France. They was in uh, all over Europe. And I am wondering, because nobody is saying it, they're just, you hear a little bit of whispers about, yes, oh, but I think these people are building up to start imprisoning us, to start arresting us when we get out of control. But I think they are, the, the move is they are waiting for something to happen in America, uh, something to happen, and we are, we are Holland is sending arms to into Syria. Uh, we are, I don't know, we are on the precipice of something that is going to really, uh, we haven't seen in our lifetime, and it's not even uh, in our parents' or grandparents' lifetime on this scale have we seen. Constance, wow. Uh, we got a question for you. Uh, our listeners would like to know what... Uh, if anything, you have heard uh, about the NDAA um, in, in France about yes, America. That is, that, you know the NDAA, excuse me, because I think that affects us also, and I am concerned about that because when Obama is saying that he has absolute authorities to go into other countries and arrest or, or kill or assassinate people, you know, and that is not only for Americans. He is do you know? Uh, okay, we in Europe we have our problem with Gladio also. You know, that is our assassination uh, group here in Europe, Gladio. But when now Obama is complaining, uh, is, is 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 saying that he has supreme rights with NATO. We call that OTAN with NATO, which is only a military machine to gangbang other countries, and that's all it is. That's all it has ever done. Yep. NATO, because we need to get out of NATO, and I think it, it is, what is this nonsense that Europe, NATO is in America to, 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 uh, to help uh, the military with American citizens? What, this, what is this gang-banging that, they, that, that they, are, they are undersigning, and now that uh, we have Germans in America, we have French in America, that are on the NATO that are going to be uh, uh, helping to arrest or uh, assassinate or kill Americans? What is this? Is madness? Oh, this is uh, absolutely. We have reached a point that if we don't make a stand now, that it is over for us. I'm telling you, it is over. And don't even worry about the elections because if it keeps on like this, who knows what is going to be uh, from maybe 2016? Because or if we even get to there. Because I am really, really concerned about where it is going because America is going down so quickly. We are going down so quickly, but the only problem is so many here in France, we don't realize it because our credit cards are still working. But, you know, I can't get more than 1,000 euros at a time out of my bank. If I want more than 1,000 euros here in Europe, uh, uh, I have to give five banking days. That means if I want it on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it's not a banking day. Right. So that means I'm waiting almost a, a week for my money, you know. I don't keep my money anymore in the bank. I keep a bare minimum. 
Uh, we are starting to stock uh, our passports. We have our passport, but where do you want to flee? Because you know now Putin is a, is a, and I don't know what is going behind black, back doors, but Putin is saying that if Obama continues this, he's going to be nuking Europe. <laughs> that is us here, you know? Oh. Yeah. And, uh, oh, man. You are uh, a very well spoken and well uh, educated uh, woman. You have a. You know, folks, the understand trove of knowledge. The, you know, Constance, the irony of you calling from France, telling Americans to wake up is, you know, it's not lost on our listeners, certainly not lost on us. You know more about what's going on in America than I would. I would say. No, but it's not only Americans. Well, I'm telling the European states that they get off of their backsides and start doing something, because we, you know, look at we are we we have so many problems over here, and you know the 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 French. We make little demonstrations, and we want a little bit more money, and it's you know, but it's not about that because we our neighbors are having serious problems, and we have an influx, an influx of North Africans now We're from Morocco, from Algeria, uh, from Tunisia, from Egypt, uh, not only that, but you also have from Greek, uh, from Greece, and from Spain, from Ireland, you know, oh, oh, it is, is where are we going to be able to house these people for jobs, and we have a high unemployment now here in France, uh, and it is done on purpose. They want a scraping on our, uh, not scraping and uh, living from our fingernails and barely surviving over here. That's what they want. Mm, boy. Yeah. And you say, you know, we need to get the people to come together. And, you know, unfortunately, that's one of the problems I see uh, as the, the masses of people are more concerned with things of, absolutely no value then they'd rather uh you know collect uh whatever it is get cars women whatever their interests are uh it isn't yes, free- i remember that uh, that video that i saw was was it last last year it was uh, called uh black friday <laughs> It was maddening, uh, people rushing in and buying these, these trinkets, uh, for, 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 for Christmas, uh, or whatever you have. You know, I don't think we have people, you know, I look at people here because we have a small business and I know what we have to spend each year, uh, And I say, how are people shopping? Nobody is preparing. Even when they talk about every day what is happening in Syria, here here people, nobody is preparing. Everybody is in the bistro, uh, the cafe, drinking coffee, talking quietly about the politics. uh, And nobody is looking around what is happening. Well, uh, it is also a a problem of the media and that the media is not reporting it, and most of the people are dependent on the major newspapers. But uh, we are done if we don't start joining hands and join in the fight and trying to help each other out of this God knows where where we are headed. Mm. You know, Constance, we, we, we need, you're right, we need to stick together, and uh, your insight, your information, the international um, aspect of, of the information that you provide is so important to us, because, so, so what you're saying, Constance, is, is what we're experiencing here, you're experiencing, but even worse over there in in france in, in oh your, yes in yes if you if you if you just look at how greece is burning yep. and the fights yep. and, and, and 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 also in spain look at that it you would not you would think where are you you would not i you know i was in america i'm a, quite an old lady now uh 35 years ago in america it was a very different country and if you had told me 35 years ago that America could change so drastically, uh, you know. I remember when I was in America, things, uh, television programs like uh, the Andy Griffith Show, uh, <laughs> uh, Bonanza. <laughs> sure, my okay. favorite. In antiquity, you know, uh, uh, Aunt B going to church with Hopi <laughs> and the uh-huh. sheriff and Barney that had one bullet in his pocket. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, and you, and now you talk about TSA. 
where does that, where did this come from? Uh, you know, it, it, it and and now and you know, uh, I, you last week you had um, uh, Monsieur, I think he is called Vernon. Uh, he was talking about the children. Well, they are hitting our children too. Because do you know that last week? I'm sure you know that they in the, our new Minister of Justice, uh, and now in legal documents you will not be able to name mother and father. You will have to say parents now. Or that, legal guardian, uh, uh, oh, because, that? and that is in direct correlation with uh, with the homosexuality, because yep. they are teaching homosexuality in our schools and our children in the high schools. They are giving the girls uh, abortion, they are giving the girls the pill and condoms, and they are teaching these dangerous things of uh, sexuality to our children, and they have no right to do this. No right. And nobody is, you know, I think it is decadent. I think the government has gone way beyond what it should have, what it should be now. Because when they, and they do this, and it's purposely done to attack our children. They are attacking our children. And, you know, uh, I was never so much disgusted as uh, back in 2009. We had a French minister his name was uh, Frédéric Mitterrand. He was the nephew of the, the, the president here at one time, uh, François Mitterrand. Right. And he had to make a retraction and a book because he is, oh yes, he is homosexual. But he had to make a retraction in a book because he wrote, this is a quote, I got into a habit of paying for boys. The profusion of long, young, very attractive, and immediately available boys put me in a state of desire that I no longer needed to restrain or hide. And this is a minister talking like this. Mm. And we should have been Outrage. We should be outraged with these Sotomaya homosexuals and all of these things that they are teaching our children and outright in our school and our children. You talk about the American children being dumbed down. Our, our children here in Europe, they have also been dumbed down. I, teach my, I had to teach my children last year geography because they didn't know countries and capitals right here in Europe. And that is, a, that is a, a, our school system. Yeah, they're too busy. So the same things that are happening in America, they are happening right here alongside in Europe. Don't think that we have any advantage here because it is the same programs, the same programs, the same programs that you have they are in, in complete, complete uh, implication here also here in Europe, not only in France, but in Europe. Wow. That is what you call the Well, I, I tell you what, I will get offline and let you uh, answer other calls, but I just wanted to, to say that, that it is time that we wake up because we are losing our children to these people. Uh, they are telling you what to eat. They are telling you what to drink. They are telling you where to play. They are telling, and you know, since when does the government, we are, we, are no longer, we are no longer mothers and fathers. We are only caretakers of our children. And I think it's about time that we put our foot down and tell these people to back off. Amen. Because we are much more, if we unite, we are much more than these people, and we can really put these people. But I am afraid that it is going to be a bloodbath, a bloodbath, a bloodbath, because once we get sick and tired of these people, it's going to be civil war all over Europe. And well, I think I, what I would like to say is these bankers think that they don't want to be running on private islands and bunkers and waiting for us to beg for them to come back. I, I really have news for them. I won't be waiting for them to come back to save us, but really to put their necks on a guillotine to try them and to start cutting off heads. And that is what is going to be because these criminals are not being prosecuted and the criminality is growing and growing. It's it's in the politics, it's in the religion, it's in the schools, it's everywhere now, and we are just being choked to death. Well, you, thank I, you, Mr. Hagman, I, I, and good night. Good night, uh, Constance. God bless you. And wow. God bless you also. Man, that's fabulous. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's Constance, our, our French correspondent. She doesn't know it yet, but we're, we're drafting her for the Christians United Broadcasting Network and for our show um, as the uh, uh, overseas correspondent, uh, French correspondent, because uh, she's, she's, like, she's like France's um, uh, Anne Barnhart, in a way. Yeah. And Barnhart of France, yeah. uh, you know, in terms of the economy and such. Absolutely. Um, but, but, wow. Okay, thanks, thanks, guys, for, for holding on. I want to just uh, mention this that's been going around in the chat room. Uh, I knew about the sinkhole in Louisiana, but I didn't know this was going on, and this can be found on the Q files, uh, stequill.com. Reports of mysterious loud earthquakes flooding into Louisiana towns. What does that mean, though? You know, uh, what does it begin- there is a, a sinkhole, yeah. a huge sinkhole there. Right. Okay, and it says nobody quite knows what caused the ground in some parts of uh, La, For- La Forêt and Terrebonne parishes. Well, different shit, per- parishes, yeah. But it certainly like, has people talking. Giant sinkhole is located in Assumption Parish. A little before 2 p.m. Wednesday, reports began flooding in. Two officials of tremors accompanied by a loud noise. Um, the parish sheriff's office and office of emergency preparedness received reports, but nobody has been able to narrow down a cause. Some people were reported oh. hearing a loud noise similar to that of thunder accompanied by rumbling. Now we got to worry about sinkholes swallowing up half of, you know, half of the state of Louisiana. Yeah, there are uh, no monitors uh, for the USGS as there are no not there is well, never seismic activity and there was an issue about about this causing like a a, a nuclear uh, blast uh, equivalent of a nuclear device down there uh i had read somewhere and, and i don't know all the particulars on it but i do know that it's a dangerous situation that hardly anyone's covering yeah but, but signs of the earth you know again signs uh, of the sun sign, stars yeah. the uh, heaven yeah. earth um you know the fish in the sea will die uh, you'll see signs and wonders in the stars and the sun, and those are happening today. Um, the earth is changing faster than we can keep up uh, trying yes. to remember what's changing. We are uh, over inundated with information, most of it garbage and useless uh, well, in the grand scheme of things. Right, um, right. We need to be focused on one thing only, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, that our soul and our alliance is with him and only him, and that bond needs needs to be strong and needs to be stronger every day. Uh, that is our number. That should be the number one goal of all people is to to make your relationship with the Lord uh, closer and stronger on a daily basis, every day increasing. Uh, you know your de- dedication. Um, you know we need to be in the Word. We need to be reading the Bibles. We need to be talking to our families and friends about, uh, you know, this, at least let them know that way the blood is not on your hands. If you stay silent as a Christian and don't warn the other people, um, the blood is on your hands. It says it right in the Bible. And, um, it says, if you do warn them and they don't turn from their wicked ways, you did your job, uh, that falls on them. But we just see so many people now, uh, are conditioned to, um, you know, and I'm not talking about our audience, I'm just talking about the people in general, uh, even in church, you know, how many people have gone to church and have conversations after the service about uh, the Lord? What do you, I just hear stuff about, you know, kids and... Uh, or the football I mean, games. Yeah. You know, if you're it's, a Sunday person, the football games. It, it's like a... Sunday. Football games. It's yeah. like a, ho- a Sunday hobby uh, for most... I'd say 75% of the people who call themselves Christians in the United States. It's like a, a hobby. But uh, it's, like, I, it's one day a week. It's when they go on Sundays. And I pray that's not the case, that you know, more people uh, do have a relationship with the Lord. And you know, if they keep it to themselves, then that's what they do. But uh, I don't think that's the case. I think we really are so uh, just the law of attraction, as they call it. Uh, and I was talking with somebody about this today, is what they use to take us out of uh, the way we're supposed to be, which is with the Lord, and by shiny objects, TV shows, whatever it is that you desire, they have created something for every desire. And uh, all that 
just distraction. Um, Christianity is it, look. I I think what you're trying to say here, and uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but but look, Christianity is is should be not only uh, what you do on Sunday morning or or you know whatever the day of the week uh, that you celebrate the Sabbath, but it's a lifestyle choice. It should be a lifestyle. It should be the way you live your life and conduct yourself. It's not just a right. uh, it's just not an example. hour hour on a Sunday. It's three. It's uh, you know. It, be the example. 168 hours every week. That's right. Be the example. Uh, lead by example. Don't just attend a worship service and then forget about it. But you have to lead by example. And what you said about being the watchman or watchman, you know, we do our best to to not to be alarmist. Well, maybe alarmist to sound the alarm um, and say, look, things are coming fast, furious down the pike whether you're listening to us in Bordeaux, France, like Constance, or, or uh, New South Wales, Australia, like we have uh, just got a note here from somebody from New South Wales, Australia, uh, or if you're listening to us in uh, Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. You know, look, make the choice to, to, to really be, um, to, to have that Christian lifestyle. And I, I said this yesterday about Matthew. I was, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 4, 5, and 6, uh, I've been reading that over and over because it, it's just been different messages I've been getting from it. And I listened to Rick Wild show from yesterday, and the exact one of the the verses that has been in my heart, uh, they uh, said during their when he goes to break and has the right, right. message yeah. come on. Yeah. And it was this Matthew five forty three through forty eight. Ye have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who per- persecute you, That's that you may be do. children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors uh, or politicians <laughs> doing that? Yeah, that's right. And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do you even pagans, uh, do, do not, not even, even pagans that. do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. How easy. And that is the verse. And what that tells me, uh, what message I get from this is this is how your heart will be pure. If you make this uh, a practice in your life to love your enemies, to um well, it's easy to love your friends. It's easy, to, it's easy to love people that just think, hey, you know what? Great. But great, it's not great, easy great, great. to love your enemy. Yeah, that's right. It's, because uh, I find yeah. myself saying prayers, uh, you know, for certain world leaders that I disdain out of a sense of obligation. And now I don't feel that obligation. I, it's more comfortable when I do pray. It's sincere. I, I mean it, you know. Um, and that's yeah. through, yeah. you know, I, thinking I, about this, these well, verses. Um, no matter what, it is difficult. But if you if you practice it, if you keep it in your heart near to you, and remember, um, you know, no matter what you read of about Obama, he's done this or that. He's just a human being. Um, he could change his ways. He could turn to the Lord. We don't know. It's not up to us. It's not. I mean, but what what can we do? Uh, we can forgive him. We can love him like any other person. Uh, in our family, and that's how to live like the Lord lived. Yeah, and it's difficult to do. And, and I've got to tell you, um, even if you can't look, I can't. Well, I'm maybe I'm not at that level yet. I don't know. It's a very, it's very difficult for me to to, to do. Uh, but but certainly, um, we're instructed to live like that as, as Jesus Christ lived. But in closing, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say this. You know, we try to serve. We do our best to serve you as watchmen, and we want you to to look at us as as your servants. Um, and I, I was thinking about this at length today. What we do carries with it a, a great responsibility, and it's a responsibility for us to get you information that you're looking for. We've got three hours to do it, and you know, um, there's so much out there. There's there's so much white noise out there, and there's so many things that ninety seconds. But you know what? They're not, they're they're not in the, in the grand scheme of things. So if we can serve you, 
we want to be your servants. We want to, we want this program to be your program. We want to, to be able to deliver you the information that, that you're looking for. And if we can help you in so doing, look at everything through through the prism of, bi- of uh, bi- biblical worldview, and I think we're, we've accomplished our objective. It's everything through a biblical worldview because without that, I mean, that's the instruction. 60 seconds. That's that's what it's all about. And, and that will give you the discernment and understanding of uh, to the current events. So it won't overwhelm you. My wife was saying today real quick, she said, man, all this, I'm just overwhelmed. And and I, I just said, look, you know, there's only one way out of that overwhelming. And, and that's just look at it through the Bible, through the through the scripture. And, and I believe that to be the case. Joe, closing comments. Just want to say have a safe weekend. God bless you all. You know, if anything crazy happens, we will come broadcasting uh, over the weekend. So hopefully Absolutely. nothing bad happens, and we'll see you Monday, God willing. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. And thank you for spending your time with us. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye.